Hello, I wonder if that is better. <laughs> Do we have audio? Big thank you to moderator St. Wolf there for dropping me a message and saying that the audio line wasn't coming through. I hope that is a lot better. So while I was rambling to myself there, you guys obviously couldn't hear me. Just thank you for tuning in and yeah, sticking with me while I had some technical difficulties. I'm just taking a little stroll through this part of woodland. Um, let's find a little place to stop and have a little sit so I can chat to you guys, welcome you in. And uh, yeah, we can go from there. There's always technical difficulties. I was working on the camera yesterday. And I think one of the cables just wasn't in properly. So you can probably hear that I'm out of puff because <laughs> I've done about half this walk already. But what a way to start a stream. So it is a lovely morning out here. I'm going to have a little look in a second. Have a chat, see who's dropped in, say hello to everyone. I'm in a lovely area that's actually been planted probably about 15 years ago. There's loads of birch, ash, some really good native species in there as well, like oak. Um, they did put some sycamore in, which is surprising. But this wood does have it in, so it's much better than the pine that it was all replanted with. Just had a little look at chat there and I could see Tom said Happy Easter and that definitely goes out to everyone. Hope you've had an amazing weekend. Thank you for choosing to join me on Monday. Cool, I'm out of puff. Let's have a little sit down. Camera's going to move wild for a second. Let's get the tripod out. Right. Let me just make myself look a bit presentable. I'm covered in sweat. <laughs> so hello everyone. <laughs> Don't know if you can see me there. Let me just check the camera. But I think we should be all right. I've got a nice backdrop behind me. So let's have a little look through chat and see who's here. We've got Apache Pilot, Back Garden Brushcraft, OT Biscuits, Fairy Dust, Ellie, Ellie Corbett, Jack Whiskey, Mum of PN. Thank you guys all on Twitch for coming over and saying hello. I really do appreciate it. Um, like I said, the kind of troubleshooting was an absolute nightmare <laughs> this morning. And over on the YouTube side, we've got Tom in the Forest, Paul Little, Stuart Lynch, Janet Outdoors, Matthew Bellamy, Monty Sullivan, Outdoor NI, Danny Gawley, Fairy Dust as well, LPTB13, Mano Mano. Hello, welcome to the stream, guys. It has been, yeah, technical difficulties this morning, but I'm just glad that it's all working. The camera's on, I'm getting my puff back. And we're going to take a little walk around this woodland, just have a little explore this morning. And then I've got a few things to cook up. I've got a tarp to set up and we'll just sit down, get a fire going in a nice um, kind of fire box. It's a bit of a rectangular one, so it's more like a grill. Really excited sh to uh, share that with you guys. And then we can get a little fire going in that, cook up some burgers and then just have a little chat. We can uh, see what you guys have been up to, see if there's anything awesome happening around. Uh, there's normally a lot of muntjac in this area, so it'd be good to see if we can get some of those over. I've got a few bits because I wanted to try and make some char cloth today as well, so 
uh, we can do that as well. And any questions along the way, always welcome. Any tips or advice, I'm learning as well. Uh, we're always learning, so yeah. I think uh, it's about time I carry on walking. I've got my, uh, my, my breath back. So uh, let's get going. I hope the view's all okay. And I hope the signal's holding out. It's a lovely spot of the woods, this. If I bring the camera over, you can see. Just the kind of view that I'm lucky to have here. I want a nice gradient and it just drops off into that oak woodland. But it really is lovely. Quite blessed to have this on my doorstep. Absolutely, buddy, 100%. Just a mountain biker coming past. Good luck. <laughs> there he is. Any excuse to get outdoors is always worth it. I'm not much of a mountain biker myself, but I know a few of you guys are. A few in the scene, um, and for good reason. It's a lovely way to explore the area. I've just always been a kind of on foot person. All right, let me move this camera. Sorry, guys. How's that view? I hope it's okay. Now I'm gonna turn on text-to-speech on the, um, the chat side of things, just so I can hear you guys while I'm having a little walk. So if you guys are using Twitch, if you send a message, I should be able to hear it read out to, to me. There's a few blue tits in front there. You probably won't be able to pick them up, but they're just on that branch over there. Says clouds over here in Norfolk too. Yeah, cloudy in Norfolk. I mean, it's it's been quite a wet weekend, really. Um, on and off. Says hello. Hello, fairy dust. Hope you're well, Charlotte. Yeah, it's a lovely location here. Um, this is kind of central Bedfordshire, and it is a lovely, lovely spot of woodland. Just as uh, going down towards this oak kind of patch here is really quite old. There's a lot of holly, really nice open spaces. And I know when Anthony was here, a subscriber from America the other day, we came not too far away from this area. And he just said what an excellent location it would be for hunting. There's plenty of tree stand locations. And it's just got a lovely, lovely feel. Chefnot 75 says, very beautiful mixed woodland you've got made nice. Yeah, it's lovely here. It's, it's a real gem. There's not many woodlands that are so old and untouched. And it is a shame. says, camp here on Twitch now. Hello, Cameron. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for tuning in. I'm glad you're having a nice time, Tom, laying in the forest watching. That is, uh, that is forestception right there. So sorry if it's a little bit jiggly and bumpy. Um, this is all kind of a new experience to me, but as I progress through this learning experience with you, it's gonna allow um, me to obviously better the quality, better the position of the camera. So if you guys want to tell me, you know, lift the camera up or turn it to the right, feel free to kind of spam it in chat, let me know. And again, if there's anything that I'm walking by that you'd like me to explain a little bit, drop it in chat and we'll, uh, we'll go through it all. Like I said, there's loads of holly here loads and loads of it which is really good because it gives great protection um, not only visibility wise but it deadens the sound which is really important when you're out doing that I 
Jack, um, Jack Whiskey, in regards to your comment there about buying soap at the Bushcraft Show, that will be a possibility, and actually that's thanks to the State Detective and uh, Feared Woods. Um, they're both going to be stocking my soap, which is very kind of them. But quickly, just before I go on, can you guys see that? Some really, really fresh droppings there. And they're quite a size. Elongated. And... Look a bit large from Muntjac for me but it could just be a large muntjac. So I'll bring the camera in a little bit closer. There's some really fresh droppings. Yeah, definitely could be roe. It's, um, it's quite a large dropping that. Muntjac are generally quite small. Although roe are quite infrequent in this area. Um, but then again, there are quite a few deer parks around, so escapees are not too uncommon. Uh, we get a lot of Chinese water deer, um, the occasional fallow and red deer escapee from, like I said, the parks. But there's, there's actually most of the species in the deer park that's near me, including Pierre David's, which are very rare type of deer to get over here. They look almost like a cross between uh, a deer, a goat and a cow. Um, quite ugly deer actually. But nevertheless, it's quite funny to see them when they've escaped and you think, well, you're completely out of place over here in the wild. So I think I'm going to take a pew up over here. We've got a nice open clearing, which should allow for good network connectivity, which is always the one thing with this stream that one has to be careful of. What a lovely clearing that is. Really nice. In fact, I know myself and Tom have camped here before because I recognise this tree. This is where we built the bushcraft shelter. So Tom, if you're watching, good memories I had here. So we both put our lean-to ridge poles from that uh, beech tree here and they came out in a kind of V and we made two independent lean-to shelters but connected at one end. It was a lovely time and that in fact means that there's a bench over here. I didn't mean to come across this but it's good to show you. There's a, a log of ash there and you can see next to it there's four pegs or four legs, holes in the top and that's actually a little bench that we use just to get our knees and stuff off the ground. So I might be able to show you that in a short little while. But for now, I'm going to perch up on this log, get everything set up. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the sounds of nature while I do so. When the first ball snapped, yes. Yes, Tom, that was so funny. Um, so anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about there was a point when Tom and myself obviously we'd built our shelters our ridge poles had come splayed off of this beech tree like I said in this fork and we just about got the roofs on started to pile leaves on and my ridge pole snapped and <laughs> kind of looked over at Tom and then we uh, I was just like oh well I'm glad yours didn't come down I think just as I finished saying that, his snapped, or didn't snap, but the weight of all mine coming down pulled all his down. So uh, we just burst out in laughter, which is always great, but it's funny when you see little trees like that, it always brings back those funny m moments and memories, which is great. Hello, everyone. <laughs>
So I hope you enjoyed seeing all the different kind of bits of forest that are around me, the different species of trees. Obviously we'll go into depth with that a little bit more, what's in the local area once I've got set up. I am also, just before I sit down and chat to you guys, and again, thank you so much for joining in on this stream. It really means the world to me. Um, but before I do that, I'm just gonna double check uh, one of my modems in my backpack, because by the looks of it, I'm only connected to one access point, uh, which is why you might be getting at the top a low network warning. Uh, I put that in place just so when it realizes that there's a low bit rate, it notifies you guys just so you don't think it's an awful stream quality. It should be much better than it is right now. So if you give me one second, um, that'd be awesome. So I'm just gonna switch the scene to be right back so you get a tiny little bit of music. Yeah, you don't have to hear me ruffling around, hear the microphone and my heavy breathing. So I will be back in just a few seconds and thank you so much for your patience today. It's been a nightmare. A bushcrafter trying to do technolo eh, technological stuff. <laughs> I think I need the camera facing me, that would help. <laughs> so hello guys. I believe I'm back on, um, on camera now. So, yes, again, thank you. I think that should be a lot better. Just charging. last night get some tarps and stuff in case I had to throw up some quick shelters because obviously even though the camera I'm using is waterproof um, the microphones aren't and the leads that then run to the battery power back uh, the power back 
the power bank, sorry, isn't waterproof. Um, so yeah, it's just a nightmare. Rain covers do work to a certain extent. Um, so I'm not too worried about walking it in when it's raining, but if I was sat here streaming for a few hours, it would soon start to deteriorate the, the uh, quality. And you guys can dictate to me when that is, if that works. Um. Can tell me. To the best quality it can be. So I'm going to walk through with the camera in my hand. And that way I can turn it around and we can go into selfie mode like so which is quite cool. Um, I've been working on this little test up for a while, but it's still, um, still a bit of a nightmare to try and get it all figured out. But the more I use it, I think Why the sh I see what the issue is. <laughs> Let me see. I do apologize about the uh, intermittency, guys. There is a tiny little issue with the HDMI input for some reason, but what that is is the mobile connection causes interference with HDMI signal. <laughs> so, of course, because I'm trying to combine the two in a backpack, Sometimes if the cable shifts over, uh, the radio signal from both of the mobile hotspots interfere. So I do apologize for that. Um, I'm going to wait and it It looks like the signal here is continuously.
problem is... Right, let's see if this is getting any better. <laughs> I have a feeling it's becoming a bit more stable. Yeah, you're completely correct as well. Um, as soon as I get out of the birch area, it just skyrockets. So that's actually a pretty good, pretty good theory. I like that. Thank you for sticking with me. So I'm losing the signal. I'm monitoring the signal decibels as I walk through here. I think we're in a pretty good spot. <laughs> I think as a matter of fact, where we set up base camp for the build, Tom, I think that's actually a go. <laughs> So let's set the tripod up. Thank you for your patience, guys. I know it's been a bit of a bumpy ride. Um, and I appreciate all of you guys being here while I pioneer this. <laughs> let's just extend the tripod. So as you can see, I've got this streaming backpack on camera normally lives on my shoulder there and inside here i've got basically um, a little computer running and that broadcasts back to my home computer and allows you guys to get it without the stream constantly uh, turning off uh, it might drop out for you or you might get the low latency but it shouldn't be ending or well, fingers crossed it hasn't ended so let's have a little look. So far, so good. I think we've actually found a good spot in the woods. Like Tom said, it's destiny, <laughs> meant to be. Um, so very happy with that, actually. Uh, that was getting a little bit concerning. Paul Little, thank you, mate. I appreciate you not going anywhere. And Tom in the forest, thank you for letting me know it's all better. Also Paul Rawlins, David Chase. Um, I have put a lot of effort in, but I'm so glad it's working now. Uh, it's, it's a nightmare. Um, honestly, technology is just never reliable, is it? I think that's why we all go back to bushcraft though, isn't it? So um, skills that we can rely on, uh, you know, even if we're wet, cold, miserable. Um, and yeah, I think that's what draws us all in. So guys, it's really nice to see you all in the chats. Um, to you guys over on YouTube, thank you so much, obviously, for being subscribed to the channel and for coming over and supporting on this. Um, first live stream, always a bit stressful, made extra so by the technology. Um, up for grabs. That is only available to Twitch viewers, but Twitch is free to watch on or view on. Uh, you get a free ticket just by following. In fact, you get your first entry for free. Uh, you get enough points to then get another ticket if you follow me on Twitch. And all you have that will then bring up, bot will bring up a link for where you can go and enter the giveaway with your points that you've accumulated for watching. But the giveaways, there are some giveaways that are available to YouTube and Twitch together. Um, so they'll be coming out maybe in the next hour or so. I'll do like an instant giveaway and that will be for some of my homemade soaps. I've uh, been working on those loads as well. They're handmade lard soap and this specific scented one is a lavender and um, chamomile one. So it's called Sleep Easy. Should help you rest really nicely, you know, nice shower or bath before bed. Um, all handmade by myself. I've been working on them for the last kind of two or three years. Finally got all the licensing sorted out. So I'll be giving away some of those. There'll be two of those to win today. And then also some morale patches, uh, the Velcro backed Primal Nomad ones. So some little instant prizes throughout the stream. And the bearskin hoodie will be drawn on my fourth live stream. So it just gives you guys a f like time and options for when you want to drop in and redeem tickets or whenever, because 
Uh, I don't expect you guys to always be available when I'm streaming, um, so it just allows people who aren't available now to then tune in on Friday or Saturday whenever I do my next stream and they'll be able to get some tickets, but also yourself. You can get a maximum of five tickets and like I said, basically if you follow me on Twitch, you get your first two tickets for free. So just type in exclamation mark giveaway on Twitch and you can get the link to the giveaway. Uh, there's also loads of other commands on Twitch. Um, if you do use Twitch, you'll know that that's how uh, little, little games with streamers work, or you can notify me that you're going uh, away from the keyboard but still watching. You can do things like exclamation mark lurk, and that just means you're lurking in the background um, and it still counts you as an active viewer. Um, so then you're entered into giveaways and still redeem channel points. There'll be little loyalty things as well. So obviously if you subscribe, um, that just helps me as a content creator, but there's no need to subscribe. Um, it's always free to watch. Um, but if you do, there'll be little things that I'm gonna figure out like emotes that you get just for being a subscriber. So it's a little cool little platform Twitch and I'm really excited to share it with you. But enough of me rambling. Let's have a little look at chat as well. There we are. So Jack Whiskey on Twitch has already done the giveaway command and just by following that you get brought to a page which is linked to your Twitch account and you'll see how many points you've got and accumulated and you can buy the tickets. So if you are over on YouTube, um, feel free to come over and view on Twitch and give me a follow, but obviously you can just stay on YouTube platform as well. I am gonna have a quick drink though because all that walking and talking quickly parches you. And sorry, I've got sparkling water, so it's not in the clean canteen. <laughs> I don't actually think I'm going to use a tarp today because the weather looks promising. Although that's famous last words, isn't it? Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is just get my little stove ready. Um, I think if I... Let me have a look. I could set up my tarp between these two smaller saplings here. That would give me a bit of protection if the weather came in. Again, for you guys, I've got to think sensibly when I'm using all this kind of technology. And then I can set up my Oxy grill there. We'll get a little fire going. I'll probably do it with some birch bark today, uh, flint and steel, just the traditional kind of method, um, or ferrocidium rod, sorry, not flint and steel. I do love the flint and steel. But then, like I said, I want to make some char cloth for the flint and steel. So then maybe next time when I'm out on the stream, we'll use that. So I've got the DD super light top here, which is probably one of my favorite go-to bits of kit for when I'm coming out on little day trips, overnighters. If I was going somewhere and it was going to be consistently wet, I think I'd just want to go for a 4 by 3 rather than this, which is, I think, 2.9 by 2.9. So just under the average 3 by 3. And that's only because it gives you a little bit more protection with that extra length. Um, Bushmen do a really good ultralight 4x3, and I use that in Scotland. But even still, this always has become my kind of go-to. And I'm just unwrapping my ridge line, which I keep wrapped around that. Keeps it really nice and small, you know, li literally the size of my palm, which is great. And I'll show you how to achieve that a bit later on. But this um, ridge line has got prussic knots and toggles on. And these prussic knots and toggles are something that Tom back on in bushcraft inspired me with some really lovely antler there and it's just a aesthetically pleasing toggle it's good quality it's not wood so it's um, not going to rot or break and yeah just lovely really really good and aesthetically pleasing and durable um, and just works for all sorts of tarps, you know, it's strong enough for a wax canvas tarp It's also strong enough for something like this an ultralight one and it just allows you to get that tension on your tarp So yeah, great work Tom on uh, Pioneering the antler toggles. I really do love them 
and I know everyone comments on them when they see them in person so uh, yeah it is a nice touch if you've got a little bit or if you're in a little pets at home store and you see some of these uh, little bits of antler that you can buy little tines uh, might be something that you want to think about so I'm going to move the camera over this way Now I actually um, demonstrated this to Anthony, a really nice experience actually, a subscriber from America. We had a great camp not too far away from here on Friday night. And I demonstrated this tarp layout to him. In fact, he did a PowerPoint, but it was the same way you put it up. And it's just, my favourite method of getting a tarp up, just a simple lean-to. A-frame or peaked shelters are really handy when it's wet again. Look at that, I'm tangled up with my microphone already. The joys of cables, guys. The joys and joys of cables in the woods. I don't know how Ray Mears did it. Well, he had a sound guy, didn't he? Andy, the sound guy with the big stick. Anyone want to be a sound guy? <laughs> I think I need it after this morning's beginning. You saw me straddling a log and I was, I couldn't even explain myself. I was still muted. So, as a matter of fact, I probably wouldn't use this if I was going to be out here overnight. And the reason is there's a lot of bracket fungi up on there and the bark is very ripply. I'll show you in a second, but the bark here is very ripply. So I can already tell that's basically just dead standing, it's on its last legs, but nevertheless, I'm going to chuck it up here, you can see there that branch just came straight, straight off, but we'll do a Siberian or Evenk hitch there, and if you want, I can bring you in and show you, um, in fact, I'll bring you in and show you anyway, because that's what this is all about, bringing you along on the experience, there's no point in me doing things and not demonstrating how to do it. So, let me just double check. Can you guys see that there? Let's have a look. I think you can see it. Brilliant. So, as you can see, easy, quick release there. You've got your working end. If you're right-handed like myself, you can go around the tree. Uh, Tom, actually, funny little story. I'm sure you've heard it on the Wadesman podcast before if you do listen. Tom's right-handed, but does this left-handed. Um, ties is not like a left-handed person, so it always throws me when I'm looking at him. I'm thinking, oh, I can't wrap my head around it. So. It's very simple, you get your working end and lay it over your hand like so. Get yourself a bit of length. So again, this is your working length and they're both laid over, wrapped around the tree. This working end goes up behind your hand. So you've created a loop around your hand like so. Bring that rope out point your hand down and you can see how that rope's kind of nestled in there now. I've done nothing else apart from turn my hand down and then with these two fingers I want to grab this and pull that through and you created your quick release slip knot. Sorry it's a bit hard to do when you're trying to demonstrate it's slow but there we are. Trip over your backpack while you do it. Again, I'll show you. Wrap it round, point your fingers down, grab these, grab that loose end, and that pulls through. That's called the Siberian hitch or the Evenk hitch. It's a really good quick release knot and just gets you nicely done, good and quick for a ridge line. That won't come undone if I'm pulling on that now. And on the other side, we do something called a taut line hitch.
Right, let's see actually if we can get around this oak tree. It's quite a girthy old tree, this one. But if we can get around it, that would be a lot better. Will we get round it with a taut line hitch though? That is the question. No. See, that's the basics of a taut line hitch. You're using the power of your own weight to pull the line. But we'll go off of this one here. It's fine. It doesn't need to be massively long for this setup. And it'll actually demonstrate to you guys the principle of this knot a lot easier because you'll be able to see it around this. Right. Let's go. Around the tree. You see this is going to bend quite a bit. Essentially, you could just tie that off there, but you've still got a lot of slack on this rope on this line and it is quite hard to just wrench and pull because as I'm sure you guys know friction always works against you so the way you can use that to help remedy that back over back over the line and use the line itself to pull and create tension you can see as I do that that really starts to tighten up because I can pull that line around the tree there That then could just hook over, create a loop, and then again pull that loop, pull a loop through. And that's really not going anywhere. It's good and tight. And again, a quick release knot. All I gotta do is pull that working end. And obviously I've got a ridge line up then with two toggles. I probably only need one because I'll probably just do a fairly shallow long plow point here um, or I'll actually go off of the two ends of the tarp backwards it's a bit rectangular so let's have a little play I always like, play, like playing around with tarp configurations uh, there's never a kind of golden rule And in fact, Anthony the other day used this as a PowerPoint setup. Um, probably a little bit too high because he's quite a tall chap. So if you go a bit lower, you get a lot of extra width on it, which is great for, you know, damp weather. But it's always hard to tell when you're setting things up at first. So. We'll do that. We're going to need a peg. Number one, make a peg. So let's have a little, a little two second look at chat. It's always, um, it's always hard to kind of, uh, make sure that I'm engaging with you guys and I don't want to be just looking at my phone when I'm in front of the camera but obviously that's where you guys are chatting through. Let's have a little look. Yeah it's definitely my favourite part of um, coming out as well. I think it's kind of the anxiety and the it's the anxiety, the planning and kind of preparation for it all makes it all worth it though, doesn't it? Yeah, let's have a look, little look at the chat. McNab, thank you so much for tuning in. Really good to see you. Outdoor NI. Um, thankfully, it's all good. I'm really glad for that. William, uh, raining in Yorkshire. I'm really, I'm so sorry that, yeah, it's not raining here, but I thought I'd get the tarp up just in case. Uh, so yeah, always better to be prepared. Janet, thank you so much for letting me know about your soaps as well. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying them. Janet actually managed to get her hands on one of the kind of first batches of soap from this year. So uh, she, was, she was desperate to get one. So I kind of gave her one and said, look, you can't use it until it's fully cured and I'll let you know. So really glad to know that it's been working well for you and hopefully uh, you've been doing some 
uh, you know, hopefully it's been keeping you clean and lasting a long time. So uh, let's, anyway, let's get, a, let's get a peg going. I've got to get a knife for that. I'll show you my knife actually. It's one of my favorite bits of kit that I bring out. It's the feared wood ones from Josh. He's a fantastic maker. Uh, it's stainless steel and it's even got my logo on it. So yeah, really happy about that. Right, so it's an elbow handle on this knife, but it's the Evo Pro by Feared Woods. Really is a lovely knife. I'm sorry it's not so clean, Josh. I was only using it the other day, but it is still incredibly sharp. You can see the logo on it there. Uh, Josh is a fantastic maker and he'll be at the Bushcraft show this year. So if you want to see any of his stuff personally, just go and check him out. He's a great guy. I've also got the Gomboy Silky Saw here, the Sawn Off Silky. This is a little ripper. I broke the tip off of that actually in this woodland on the trip that I was telling you about with the, um, with the shelter. So that episode is when we recorded the podcast Saw From Saws. And it really was a, uh, a weekend where we were Saw From Saws. The, the tip went straight into my finger and uh, yeah. It led to a good discussion though, and saws are always one of those um, safety concerns when you're out in the woods. They can be uh, quite underrated actually. Uh, but I think in, in the arboriculture industry, like tree surgery, I think more injuries actually happen from silky saws than they do chainsaws. So it kind of puts it into perspective, but there's plenty of hazel around here. So let's go coppice a little bit of hazel together and then make a peg, uh, make a few pegs because we will need them. So I'll just cast backpack with. <laughs> so actually a lot of these stools have been coppiced. It looks like by other bushcrafters or just throughout the years that like-minded people have been coming, but there's a nice stool over here, which has got quite a few good long lengths on which is a good opportunity then to coppice this piece. And coppicing is just the process of harvesting long timbers. And that allows the shoots to then regrow. So again, there's some more scat here, some more deer droppings, really good sign, much smaller than the last lot though. So, Hazel, um, it really depends. I just saw a comment there about how to pick your hazel when you're out and really what kind of determines what stuff you harvest. But I think it really goes down to what you're looking to use it for. And we always have a tendency to kind of over engineer things when we're out in the woods, which is great. But if it's a one time usable things, um, sometimes like pegs, if you're only coming to a location once or twice, it seems a shame to harvest something, you know, I wouldn't want to go for something that thick and that established if it's only a one-time use thing. So I'll always try to actually, in that circumstance, look for something that maybe even a dead bit of standing in the coppice um, or something that's, again, scarred or the muntjac have been eating the bark on. So something that's probably likely not going to survive anyway. Um, that seems like a fair, fair kind of harvest for me. Although by doing this, you're not adding any detriment to uh, this plant. You're in fact invigorating new growth because every time you cut this, the stool will then send up multiple shoots. And that's in fact how you ended up with this anyway. This hazel um, was once just one stem or maybe two that was cut. The stool then sends up loads of shoots into um, what you've got here. So. There's plenty of good harvestable hazel here. It might just be worth me having a little look around the other stools, just in case I'm overlooking any bits uh, that are, like I said, on their last legs. There is a bit here, for example, which it's got probably about a four foot length. But apart from that, up above it's split off. It's only got a thin, weak little shoot. So maybe that could be a good option. I could probably get three or four pegs out of that. and. Uh, it would do quite well. Yep, 
Yeah, that's a great idea. I like um, the I like the thought behind keeping stuff in places uh, that you're going to frequent. It kind of uh, it does make sense, and I know a lot of us bushcrafters over here in the UK do the same. We'll leave a tripod somewhere or uh, leave pegs standing up against a tree, and it's quite nice actually. Um, I remember I don't have to shout actually because I've got a wireless microphone. <laughs> so sorry if I blew your eardrums out there. I'm just having a little look around and seeing if there's anything here. See, this is a bit of dead standing hazel in the middle. You can probably hear how. Probably will harvest that actually. Just bring the camera closer because there's a good few lengths on there. And I don't need anything super sturdy because there's no high winds. In the mad rush today as well, I actually forgot my belt, so um, I've got to carry my knife around in my hand, which isn't too bad, to be honest, but yeah, <laughs> it does feel strange not being able to put it back down there. So as you can see, this is quite dead, dead standing. It's got this whippy bit up at the top, but again, I can probably get one good little thin tack, tacking stake out of that. Um, generally speaking, because it's dead as well, I'm not too worried about the cut in terms of introducing bacteria because I'll still be cutting where it's dead. Uh, but I still do want to make a nice clean cut. I don't want it to be intrusive. I don't want it to be somewhere up here as well. So I'll try and bend that back. There we are, snap straight away, you see. That's not so bad. I can just clean up that stool on a nice kind of 45 degree angle, make sure that water runs off of that. And for example, right there, a clean cut often looks quite out of place in the woods. I'll bring the camera down to show you. But there's sometimes nothing worse than going through the woods and seeing this, for example. nothing worse than walking around and seeing these kind of bright glaring stools so quite simply what you can do just cover it with a leaf mold cover it with a few leaves scatter it over it takes the eye away from it for anyone else traveling through and just keeps it nicely tucked tucked away um, and yeah it's just nice non-intrusive we'll go back over to the tarp and we'll sit down make up some pegs it's a lovely lovely morning out here in the woods i can't thank you all for tuning in with me i hope you're enjoying it i hope it's nice and relaxing and it's not too much hard work to keep keep up with me <laughs> it's a it's a little bit hard because i'm working in the blind here um, i'm not really aware of what the stream's doing i'm just having faith in all the kind of work that i did in the past and hoping that it all works out in my favor so this, that's going to be more than fine for probably two or three pegs down at the bottom. And then this section here, I can always whip myself with it and also use it for something else. <laughs> I'm just going to get my little sitting pad if the ground's quite damp.
Thank you so much for the follow, Paul Little, as well. Really appreciate it. And that's great to know that this spot has been a lot better interference-wise. I think you might be onto something there, uh, Apache Pilot, with the birch signal causing a lot of interference. So I'm just sat down now on my wax canvas mat. Really nice bit of kit. That's from Thornhill Ultra Heavy, actually. Uh, Scott is a great guy. Um, he really, really knows his stuff when it comes to fabrics and sewing. Um, he's been doing it a long time. Actually began his journey in the ultralight scene, which is quite funny considering he makes the complete opposite now. But Tom discovered him, uh, I think it was through his eBay store or maybe Instagram. And ever since, he's just been a, 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 f a real keen favorite of ours. Makes some really nice, really nice bits of kit. So I'm just gonna trim this down into some stakes. Probably seven or eight inches. get into a habit of closing the saw now I've spent too many times I've gone to pick up a saw and picked up the blade um, it's just easily done when you rush we'll do four cuts there or five just to get a nice point on that peg and if you want you can chamfer it off Just so if you did have to hammer it in, you'd uh, reduce the risk of splitting that top off. Chamfering always works really well. I don't need to do it here because I'm not gonna hammer it in, but it does make a nice, neat, aesthetic job. So we'll get these three pegs done. And then we can uh, get the power point set up get the Otzi grill going and start cooking something up, making some char cloth and just having a chill by the fire would be quite nice actually. Um, it's nice to enjoy those sounds before we all go back to work and it gets busy and busy again. I'm going to put up chat here just so I can see what people are saying along with different bits. Brilliant. Yeah, I love a bit of canvas as well, Apache. It is fantastic. Blade safety is one of my top priorities when trip hazards and then pokey eye hazards. It's when I stay in, when, why I stay in your hammock, William. Um, me too, so, uh, some of the knives shown here and a few other YouTubers are amazing, just need to save up. After buying a few of the more base or cheaper ones, it's more cost effective to buy a good knife, but you never realize that until you start using one. Uh, that's a really good point actually, William. Um, that's over on YouTube chat. Um, yeah, knives. I mean, we've all started at the bottom with our knife journey. Um, I still, in fact, have my original Mora's and they will always hold a soft kind of spot in my heart for that reason. They're, they're your first knife. And I think if you started with something like this, you might disrespect it, um, which isn't, isn't a bad thing. You've got to learn somewhere, but it's, it would be a shame to ruin such a nice piece. Um, so I'm quite glad actually that I started at the bottom uh, with my knives, because I do fear that if I'd got the Allen wood or um, you know one of the Ray Mears knives very early on into my bushcraft uh, career, I guess you could say, 
that maybe my sharpening technique could have actually ruined a nice knife and now actually I've gained the skills and the confidence to use a knife. It seems fitting that a, um, a better knife then goes in my hand and of course Josh tempted me with his lovely handmade work and it had been something I've been in the market for for a long time. I'd always stuck with my Castron Woodsman and occasionally um, I still use that on little day trips because it's such a great little handy uh, small knife, it's reliable, it's sharp and yeah, it, 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 that again will have a nice a little soft spot in my heart um, just because it was my first upgrade from Amora. Uh, I'd always had I think I had a Mora, I uh, can't even remember the number of it, I had a few Moras um, and then I went to a Condor Bush Law that I put the scales on myself with a liner, black liner. I really liked it but I'd, um, I'd kind of gone a bit thin on the handle whereas a lot more professionally handled knives they've got that kind of um, slight contouring especially where the palm fits which I just didn't have the experience on doing but nevertheless it's still a great knife it was a really good experience learning how to make a knife handle and it gave me more respect for knife makers as well because it's not easy at all to create that and keep that symmetry um, yeah very very hard work so yeah thanks William I really like that comment Will I be at the next community camp in Wales? Be great to meet me in person. Um, you'll have to let me know when that one in Wales is. If I can be there, I will be. I'd love to. I love the community camps. They're great fun. It's so nice to meet like-minded people. And in fact, quite a few of you guys watching, obviously I've had the pleasure of meeting at those and uh, the Bushcraft Show and such. So, so without those things, it, it's, um, it's always an internet-based community. So it's nice to put faces to names and sit down and so definitely might be, I mean, if I can, I will be. Um, Apache Pilot, one headphone with chat speaker would do you well, mate. Wouldn't look out of place either. You can get some that lasts a long time. Yeah, great idea, actually. Thank you, um, Anthony. That's not a bad shout. I could then stop having to keep looking at the phone when doing wild camping even just a little pitch up in the day like this do you have any issues getting asked to move on from ot biscuits um not really um and if i did obviously i just i would just move on uh it's kind of you know we all do these kind of little wild camping trips um respectfully uh, and I think that's the most important thing to portray when you are doing them. If someone comes and asks you to move on, if they are the landowner or something, it's probably just best to move on. Although I generally tend to pick somewhere nice and tucked out of the way. Uh, again, like I said, all those holly um, thickets that we walk through really give a good barrier of protection from any of the really heavily trodden parts of the wood. Um, and also I'm using a bush box kind of fire stove today. It's actually called an Otzi grill. So that will keep my fire up off the ground so then I'm not even scarring the forest floor um, and yeah basically it's uh, it's just a stove so you're not actually having a you are having a fire but it's a, a bit easier to argue the point in case that you're being protective it's got a little ground mat which is heat proof as well so all little things like that do help again using dead wood for your pegs you haven't cut anything living um, so it's just little things things like that that can be something to think about when you're out, but you don't need to stress too much about it. Just be respectful. Um, you know, we're not listening to loud music and raving and stuff, are we? So I, I think people would find it hard to uh, find a problem with what we're doing, unless they're just being a Karen. <laughs> and apologies to anyone called Karen out there. It's a Castrum Forester flat grind, Jack Whiskey. Yeah, buddy, that's awesome. Uh, Castrum do some really amazing bits of kit, actually. Uh, I've always been pleasantly surprised. I know Roger Harrington from Bison Bushcraft helped design the Castron Woodsman.
it would help if the tarp was the right way around, Liam. But hey, there we are. have to use a thinner peg on this one so I'll just do a simple snap and stake with that one and I'm gonna get a pole I've got a little pole in the back here to lift that up. That's going to be a nice place for me to just sit. It's a little bit low, but I don't want to be standing up under there today. Right. Let's have a little play with this then. have a little measure for height obviously I don't want to puncture this so I want to come that's about height says are flying over <laughs> yeah. so I want to take a good few feet off of this and then chamfer the end. This will then place on one of the top one of the top lanyard points that's reinforced. And again, like I said, I'll chamfer this, so I'll show you the end chamfering here. Oh, I do apologise, OT Biscuits. I will have to sort out the auto moderator. Uh, I can see your messages, though. Uh, great advice. Thanks, man. I've been worried about giving wild camping a proper go because of being caught and um, being overcautious. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those really hard things to kind of get over, and it's not um, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. Going out as well can be quite daunting. You know, people can get anxious about it for all sorts of reasons. Um, but just take small steps, you know, if you're thinking of wild camping in a space, maybe go out there and do what I'm doing, you know, spend a few hours there in the day, see who comes around. Uh, you don't even have to have a fire at first, or you can just have a stove or a little firebox again. Um, and just then work your way up to having a, a wild camp. You can then actually say, okay, the daytime was good. Let's go out in the evening. Let's go up kind of late afternoon sometime and stay there until eight, nine o'clock at night and see what it becomes like. And you can push it back a few hours until you're comfortable staying out. Um, there's never any problem or shame in going home either, buddy. So in terms of chamfering, I've already made a start there, but I just want to round this edge off because those sharp edges can obviously start ripping fabric in the, uh, in the, on the top, which you don't want, especially when that's your roof. So by taking cuts on the peak of each cut that I've already made previously, you can start to round off this edge. So you almost just keep cutting that corner away. And these knives are extremely sharp by Josh. So it doesn't take much before you've got a nice chamfered end. And you always just want to be tip aware when you're using a knife like that. Because it's easy to suddenly turn like that, go to cut and you realise you've cut your flesh. So that's good and round now. I'm happy with that going on to the top. So 
So back on Twitch, I'm going to turn up the volume so text-to-speech should work now. I should be able to hear you guys um, typing through. With the clocks changing even now, more reason to get out and enjoy them, enjoy them extra beautiful sunsets. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> it's so nice. I forgot that the clocks went back. I was thinking, 11 normally sleeping that late. Um, so yeah, it was crazy. Yes, they really sent me a, sent me west. <laughs> We're looking to get a stove or firebox right now, actually. Thanks, man. Feeling inspired. OT biscuits. I'm so glad. There's um, there's some really good options as well. There's ones by like one tigress, one tigress. Um, although the firebox themselves are just really well made, um, and they kind of fold out. They've got hinges on them and stuff like that. They're really well made. A little bit more forgiving and simpler. And again, kind of you could say with the, the knives things, is it worth starting at the bottom? to realize after a few uses, you just want to get the better one. So um, have a little look at Firebox. Um, definitely really good little bits of kit. Also the Oxy Grill, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, and I think there was another comment there on YouTube. G'day, have I got any new kit that you highly recommend? Um, and also, Mano Mano, it's a civil offence, not a criminal. You may be asked to move politely. That's it. Yeah, that's correct. Um, it's not a criminal offence, what we're doing. It is a civil. So like Mano Mano said, if you do get asked to move on, um, you just kind of politely move on. Um, that's really all they can do. If you then start causing a problem, I'm sure that's when things will just get a bit complicated. But, you know, um, it's, it's not hard to pack something down and um, sometimes a conversation might spark from that. Anyway, if it is a landowner, you could explain to them what you're doing, your ethos, your ethics around bushcraft um, and, you know, why you feel like it's something that you've come out to do, um, whether it be for your mental health or just for some space or uh, to enjoy nature and you never know they might actually say well look um, you know you might gain some permission out of it so yeah so there we have it got my powerpoint all set up it's not not too low at all <laughs> I wonder how that looks on camera um, I hope it's not too dark. I do have a tiny little preview screen which I should be able to see. I think we're good. That's a bonus. Aperture Pilot 75 says looks snug mate. Yeah, it really is. Nice and cosy. And I think it's about time that I quickly have a drink. Um, just double check all the batteries and everything. Hope you'll get on stage again. <laughs> Paul, thank you so much. Yeah, the wrap, it always, it's um, my April Fool's thing has been literally that. It's an April Fool's. Um, so it's just something for the community to laugh at, enjoy. And there's a little bit of truth in this one. Uh, the right to roam, obviously, is a massive shame that we lost that or don't have it. Um, we never, you know, hundreds of years ago that we really lost our... Um, access like our common rights and I think it was actually I was looking at it's 262 million acres um, or 2.62 million hectares of land that we actually lost access to which is about 26 percent of the land mass of the UK it's pretty crazy <laughs> I'm really sad that we um that we lost access to that so that was the kind of um a bit of the motive behind the rap but yeah TikTok actually won't allow it they um they mute it instantly and uh, deleted the video. So I'm not sure what went, went on with that. <laughs> to keep my knives sharp. Last time I sharpened my Mora, the blade edge looked more crooked than a British smile. <laughs> Jack, um, yeah, it's, it is hard sharpening knives. Um, so half of the problem is getting that angle right. I mean, it's not half the problem, 99% of the problem. It's keeping that angle continuous throughout your stroke. It can be quite easy to um, maintain that on a push stroke, but then you go to your pull stroke and as you do it, you start to roll up or you start to roll down. And that's where you start to get micro bevels or um, you, you get 
discrepancies between what bit of the knife's touching at certain points. Um, there's a really good method. I think Ben Orford did a video on it, actually. I'm pretty sure that's who I watched. Um, and he actually, a really great technique, get a big Sharpie, a big thick felt tip, black, and coat your whole bevel. So the whole Scandi grind bevel, you'd color what you can see reflecting here, all of that in with black. And then you go to sharpen. And as you're doing your sharpening, you can then monitor, once you take it back off, what part of the blade has actually been worn away by the stone. So that way you can monitor how much pressure you're putting on the tip, if you need to roll the bevel a tiny bit more. Um, if you're, It just gives you that little bit more clarity that just guessing um, it doesn't really give you, it takes all that guesswork out. So that's really helped me actually along on my sharpening because uh, it's not an easy thing sharpening and I tend to now just use my blades with a strop. Um, I tend not to sharpen my blades too much and if they do need a sharpen, uh, then again, I'll color in the bevel if I need to and have a little go. Uh, if then after I'm doing that, I'm confident that everything's going smoothly, I'll just keep going. Uh, but you don't need a lot of time on the stones. That can be something that a lot of people overdo, in, in, including me. <laughs> I've done that before. And shout out to East Anglian Bushcraft, Hazy and Muddy. Thank you for giving me something to watch. Absolutely. East Anglian Bushcraft, um, absolute top lad. Really enjoyed my time up in the Peak District with him. Uh, shame I felt a little bit ill and didn't do the second day, but it's better not to flog a dead horse. Um, but yeah, really great channels. So I'm glad, I'm glad William, that you've uh, been enjoying them and it's inspiring you to get out because it's so important to come out and enjoy this. It's such a lovely day. <laughs> um, Paul Swin, yo, I hope you're doing well, buddy. I really do hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for tuning in. That means the world. It's good to see that you're able to comment as well. <laughs> you're actually able to tune in. Um, I know you've been having problems with YouTube and stuff. Uh, Apache Pilot, I think I'm the only one who enjoys the noise of the sharpening stones, especially with axes. It's very calming. It is. It's incredibly calming. I think, um, yes, yeah, one of those therapeutic sounds. I know Tom would definitely agree with you, um, but it feels like something that we've heard, heard throughout history, isn't it? You know, sat down sharpening your knives or in history, swords or spears or whatever. Um, yeah, just nice kind of ASMR. But if you guys can give me about five minutes, I am literally just going to have a drink. I'm going to open my backpack, check up all my batteries, because what I don't want to happen is this suddenly just cut out because one of the batteries is drained. So I'm going to put you on with some nice little chill out music for a few minutes. Then we'll come back, get the Oxy grill up, get some kindling into it. Let's get a fire going. I've got a burger to cook with some Monterey Jack cheese, which is my favorite cheese all the way from the States. Um, and yeah, then we can make some char cloth and just sit down, enjoy the wood smoke, enjoy the crackle of the fire and uh, yeah, just enjoy our time together. So thank you so much guys. I will literally be back in a few seconds, well probably a few minutes if you give me a
Oh, right, hello guys. I think I moved the camera actually, so apologies, one second. We scoot it back here. So hello, <laughs> I'm back. Camera batteries are doing all okay. Um, I've got a big power bank with me, so it's quite a weighty set of kit that I've got to bring in, which is why I was a bit out of breath. Um, but everything's doing well. We're on 69%, well hey. Um, so plenty of time left to share this experience with you guys. I believe everything else is doing all okay. Battery wise, microphone's doing all okay. So um, great to be back and live with you guys. Roman Prepper, uh, thank you so much. Let's sing along, the king of bushcraft. Let's all sing along. Hey, thank you so much, my man. Uh, I really do appreciate you tuning in um, and being such a loyal subscriber. I know you're all the way over there in the east. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope you're well. Uh, and thank you so much for tuning in. It's a lovely day here in this woodland. We've got blue skies behind us. So I think it's time that we get a little fire um, going. I'm going to be using an Oxy grill today. So let's get that out of the Helicon text bag, which is right here. This has become a fast favorite of mine. Uh, it really has. Um, let's see, I'm going to have the fire here. I've got some good network connection right where my backpack is. So I'm a bit hesitant to move it. but that shouldn't cause an issue. If you guys lose me at any point, just give me a little shout. Right, I should be able to see your chats now as I do all of this. Uh, it's a little bit hard combining YouTube chat and Twitch chat. Um, but brilliant, I'm glad. But yeah, it's hard to monitor both of them. So if I do miss some of you guys chatting on YouTube, I do apologize. Um, and as soon as I've got this fire going, we're gonna draw the first giveaway for a patch and then we'll do one for a soap. So definitely keep tuning in. That is relevant for you guys on YouTube as well and relevant for you guys on Twitch. So. All you will have to do is type in a word that I will say and you'll be entered into the giveaway. Anyone who has entered that word within a five minute period will get rolled and then it will automatically pick a random giveaway uh, winner. So it should be a really cool experience. 75 says sausages. <laughs> sausages. <laughs> so this stove is made by Otzi, Otzi Adventure. Um, it's a great bit of kit. It comes with this fireproof mat that I can place on the floor. But regardless of that, I still will clear away the leaf litter just because it makes things a lot easier working in an area where you haven't got bits of leaf, twigs, all of that flicking around while trying to get fire going or trying to cook. Um, this relies on two end pieces that I have to remember or figure out what go what way. Otzi, Otzi, so I, that will go the same direction, left and right. So I got that correct. So it slots together like a firebox. So it's got a slanted back facing towards you guys at the moment. This is the bottom of the stove and they slot in. And as you can see, it makes 
a triangular bottom, a little ash pan, so it catches all the embers in that stove, nothing going on the ground there. In the back here, it's got these little slots, which make it really handy for putting in that, for example, there as a hot plate, or I could put that down below as a grease catch tray, and I could put a grill on top of that. So I could take that off and just use the grill. Really handy little stove, allows you to cook things like burgers, sausages, um, extremely, extremely handy. Uh, bring it up to show you guys. Here you are, that's the Otzi grill. Um, and it's just like a really small little kind of grill barbecue. Yeah, it's, it's small, it's lightweight, it comes together when you hold it wrong. Um, it's everything you love when you're outside. <laughs> oh, the trials and tribulations of showing things on cameras sometimes. This is all the stuff that you don't see uh, on normal YouTube videos. You get to see all the behind the scenes stuff here. Um, so, we'll turn it, I think, we'll do it this way so you guys can see. I'm not too worried about being in the oats and biscuits. So this is the Otzi Adventure, O-T-Z-I Adventure Gear Spark. I'll put that in the chat now on Twitch side. Otzi Adventure Gear Spark. Grill. Oh, gear, not cassar. I do apologise about that. <laughs> I'll put it on the... You're from Russia. Well, greetings from Russia, Roman Prepper. Uh, really good to have you here on this side of the chat. And I hope you do enjoy it here in Old Blighty in England. Otzi Adventure. Yeah. Spark. Grill. Right, so both of you guys, both of you sides, Twitch and YouTube should be able to see the name of that there. So obviously, we want to get some kindling in the bottom of this here to allow, uh, obviously, a fire to get going, but we also want to give a good bed in here. It comes with some awesome little attachments. Yes, yeah, it does come with some great little bits of kit. I mean, um, I actually won this in a giveaway um, on Instagram, so it was really, really nice. I've used it once or twice. As you can see, it's got a tiny little bit of surface rust on there. That's only from washing it last night, actually. It doesn't take long, but that will burn off. Um, but really great bits of kit. It, it's not too heavy. It um, comes in a little carry bag, and it really just fits nice into the, into the satchel um, and kind of goes hand in hand when you want to just come out and cook something and not have a fire directly on the ground. Um, in terms of kindling, again, there's always loads of stuff just within arm's reach. I always notice um, a lot of people go through massive efforts to get kindling. Um, and of course, you want to get your fire right, but sometimes you can overlook stuff that is just everywhere, um, especially in a woodland like this. It's this section anyway hasn't been managed for a long time so there's a lot of dead fall um, even though it's been wet and there's a lot of stuff hung up in the kind of low level branches of trees and the holly uh, branches that have been laying on the ground but they've got verticals that are quite thin um, they're normally good and dry they'll snap off quite well so for example here this has just been laying down but these twigs perfect really good and dry so these little sex twigs, in fact, I'm just going to put straight in the bottom of the Oxy grill just to help as a little bit of a bed. And in fact, there's something cool that I thought um, is a nice little inclusion um, here. So they obviously give you the kind of fitting instructions, um, but they also do fire, you know, little tips here for using something like this. So it says if you want, um, if you want to try and prevent this warping 
in the first initial little bit, which can happen. They'll generally speaking always go back to their original stage, but it's build a small fire in here just to temper the grill when you first get it. Obviously this has already been tempered, that's why it's got that kind of bluing on there. But it's nice that they give those kind of bits of tip, tips and advice in their kit as well. Um, quite often we forget and we just rush into using them and then we think, oh no, it's warped. But um, you know, little fires in there do help. Um, but this is really good actually for a few inch rounds. Once you've got a fire going, you can put them in there like a little log burner and they'll just keep bedding down and building that good bed of coals, which is really what you want. This isn't a, a grill to be cooking on flames with. You want to get a good bed of coals in there. So we'll get some of those smaller twigs in the bottom just so those embers have got a place to find their home as they nestle down. And we'll go have a little look for some more as we walk around. There's some here that I'm going to harvest straight away anyway. You can see these are really dry. If there are any that I feel are damp to the touch, I'll simply leave those. What I'm looking for really is matchstick thin stuff. So I'm going to progress a little bit further down towards the birch um, and have a little look there. I might not bring the camera with me, but I'll come back very shortly with some birch branches and I'll show you the harvesting of those and just in the meantime I'll leave you with the lovely lovely bird song that we've got going around and I'll give you a little bit of a view just of the kind of hazel coppice rather than the straight ground and um, yeah I'll be nice and quiet we'll see if we get anything walking through so make sure you all have a little chat with each other and um, yeah just enjoy your time out here in the woods I'll be right back and thank you for, yeah, just holding with me for a second. I'll be right back with some birch. You might hear me walking back as the microphone reconnects. I'll take the phone with me so I can monitor chat Habitat as well. Yeah, it really is a beautiful, beautiful bird song. Paul Rawlings, by the way, I'm uh, just off camera at the moment, but I just saw your comment. Um, I spend my time traveling the waterways of Britain full time in my narrowboat, and I find some lovely spots to set up a tarp and hammock and have a cook up using my firebox. Oh, that's amazing, Paul. Um, the firebox is one of those really versatile bits of kit. We were just talking about it, actually. Um, just saying how they give you that flexibility of not having to have a fire on the ground. Joey G, Polypore Productions boy. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Hope you're doing well. I had a really lovely camp with you at the weekend. I think my microphone's just about to disconnect. So um, I'm gonna leave it just by the camera. Well done, OT Biscuits. <laughs> That's great. Actually, over on YouTube chat, um, a, a, a guy was just saying about, um, who was it? It was Paul Rollins was saying that he uses his firebox quite a lot on the narrow boats and waterways of the UK. You know, when he finds a spot, he can set up a tarp. So really great investment. And I'm so glad that it's um, one of these steps that's going to get you outdoors, buddy. That's brilliant news. So I'm just going to clip my microphone here by the camera and I will be right back.
I'm back with a good handful of kindling. So I'm just going to hook the microphone back up. If you bear with me just a second, guys. Right, let's have a little, little browse. Right. Hello everyone. Let me just move the camera again. There's a, um, a little bit for the Oxy Grill. But I've never yet figured out what it's for. Um, it looks like it's to slot through something to hold it. Don't know. But yeah, still haven't found out what it's for. I should probably read the instructions, shouldn't I? <laughs> you genius. It doesn't say on the instructions. That's why I never knew. Who said meat skewer? Oh, you biscuits. You're a legend. That probably is literally exactly <laughs> what it's for, dude. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much. You blew my mind there. Yeah, and it looks like it's got a little bit there to hold your skewers. That's awesome. So when it's got a nice bed of coals in the bottom. Ah, oh, legend. Thank you, buddy. Um, yeah, I was worried that I was doing something catastrophically wrong with it, but it seems uh, it seems okay. <laughs> That's perfect. So let's get this fire going anyway. I um. Apachepalot seventy five says, "What a good idea." Driving back home to Norfolk now, mate. Be nice tuning in. All the best to see you on the next one. Peace, you lot. Monty Sullivan, thank you so much for joining. Um, sorry, I didn't get to do the giveaway while you were here, but there over the next four streams there will be um, the giveaways happening so as soon as I've got this fire going I'm going to do a little draw um, so yeah I'll make sure you're in the chat for when I do one of the next ones thank you so much for joining um, also Paul Rawlins a great way to connect with nature only this morning around 7 a.m. I was watching an otter hunting for fish oh mate that sounds so nice I think um, I think that's one of the nicest things about getting out in nature the other day when we were out um, there was a few muntjac deer came through just at the bottom of camp, probably about 100 yards or 50 yards away. But it was just nice to see that and just remind you that you're in somewhere wild and that it's not all the pace of busy life and things just carry on. You know, no matter where we are, there's the deer are still doing what deer do and the squirrels are still doing what squirrels do. And it is always that pace here in the woods, which is nice to come and connect to. Um, really lovely comment there, buddy. Um, Roman Prepper. In the morning, I already went to the nearby forest to see if spring mushrooms, morels, and strings had appeared yet. These are delicious, unusual mushrooms, but it's still early, there are none. But I picked such mushrooms from trees like tinder fungi. There are different, they don't eat, they make medicinal tinctures. <clears throat> um, wow, so morels, of course, yes, Roman Prepper, morels are the most elusive mushroom to me yet. I personally have never found one, but I have been shown them by people who have found them and I have had the pleasure of actually probably about 300 yards away from this camp in that pine patch behind us, uh, probably four or five years ago I cooked up some wild venison with some morels that a friend had harvested, he'd found them wild in a garden growing. So. Um, that was a really delicious meal and ever since then I've been on the hunt for them and they have eluded me up until hopefully this year but I don't think that's going to be the case. I, uh, I will keep my eye out and on the walk out we can have a little look together because like you said it's right around the time when they're going to start popping up so uh, it's really nice to hear you've been doing the tinder fungus as well um, and the medicinal tinctures I'd love to have a little look at so if you're doing a video or anything on those I'll definitely come out and check. Um, definitely send me a message and let me know. 
Um, hello from Sioux City, Iowa. Keep up the great videos. BK Reap, thank you so much. That's an amazing comment there over on YouTube Live. Um, really, really awesome. Sioux City in Iowa. I mean, um, I hope the weather's doing well for you over there. It's a glorious day here in the UK. I do appreciate you tuning in to um, watch the stream as well. Um, yeah, I hope it's lovely over there and I hope it's spring is waking up just like it is here. Um, weather's been wet for mushrooms this year and last very wet. It's very true actually, there's been a lot of, um, a lot of wet weather. Uh, in fact, a lot of the local kind of waterways through this woodland are actually running with clear water now, which um, personally in my lifetime has been a very, very infrequent thing. So it's nice to see that. Um, it really is. I think if it stops being so wet, we can see the, uh, the result of that in a really healthy spring and hopefully summer. Um, but let's just hope it doesn't go the complete polar opposite like it did two years and go complete uh, drought. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry about the little low network warnings occasionally. Um, it just drops down the bit rate a little bit to make sure that it stays streaming to you guys um, rather than end the connection. So it puts up a little warning for you and I hope it's kind of self-explanatory that way as well. Um, oh, the weather sucks. No, that's not good. <laughs> I'm really sorry to hear that. I hope it improves. Is it snowy or is it wet or windy? Um, I know it's been all of those things over here. But anyway, onto fire lighting. It's easy to get sidetracked when we're having so much fun talking, but I really do enjoy it. And this is what it's all about. So please don't um, feel like that means you have to stop typing messages or anything like that. It's really nice to interact with you guys. And of course, have little conversations and chat amongst yourselves, uh, get to know each other. If um, hopefully this is gonna be a frequent thing so you guys can get used to each other's company, get each other um, and just spend some quality time building a bit of a community that'd be uh, really what it's all about I'm going to switch over to IRL chat with the text uh, text box um, on this side I think it is so in that respect it will hopefully not switch scenes anymore for you guys I've got a Thornhill Ultra Heavy mat here and I'm going to reposition the camera so you guys can see better. So I just had a little look and realised that it's not been the best scene for you guys. So hopefully you guys can see that now. It should be a lot better. At the Chepelot 75 says, where's Andy the assistant when you need him? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Never an assistant when you need him. No, I appreciate all you guys. You guys are my assistant at the moment. Um, and I appreciate your patience with it. This is a... It's not an easy format to, to be doing this kind of live streaming. It's not as simple as sitting in front of a computer screen and playing a game. Although hopefully at some point I'll be able to jump on something um, on Twitch in that respect. I might jump on um, Hunter Call of the Wild or Way of the Hunter. Um, some really cool little survival games out there and hunting bits. I do play Daisy. Uh, I haven't played it in ages because the last time I went on, it was uh, I was on an official server. It was impossible to get going, so I'm going to have a little look at some modded servers. And um, yeah, definitely love that game. 
I was big into PUBG as well. Warzone. All the good little fun ones. Also like stuff, um, stuff like Sea of Thieves, which is a good little bit of fun. Hello, Craig, we got East Anglian Bushcraft in the chat. I better lower the camera actually. I think what I'm gonna do is lower the tripod now. Get into a bit of a better scene for you guys. Yeah, we got an East Anglian bushcraft in the chat over on um, over on YouTube Live. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Uh, it has been a little technological journey this morning, but we're there. <laughs> Red Dead is awesome for hunting. Yes, Red Dead Redemption is such a great game for uh, hunting and stuff like that. It is great. Helldivers, yes, uh, Back Garden Bushcraft and I have been playing Helldivers. Very, very good game. Um, Jack Whiskey 0101. Glad to see that you're also a fan of it. Icebreaker 214647 says Red Dead Redemption 2 is my number one game. So I'm just going to prepare some fatwood here. I've got this lovely bit from light my fire i'm just using the back of my knife to shave some of this up buff it up into a kind of tindery fluff just like so and i'll cut that off into the mat i'll zoom into the mat in a second when i'm going to be doing the fire lighting in fact, I'll do that now. You can see the whole process. I'll move the kneeling pad around and we can go from there together. pointing how's that <laughs> I don't know um, let me just have a little browse right so if I do that I can turn the stove this way if I put that there and bring this to here it should be able to see everything in action and this can come towards me a bit I can go back a bit and I think you should be able to see everything there hopefully my shadow doesn't get into the way we've got Paul Little as well saying hi Craig uh, that's to UE Sanglian Bushcraft over on YouTube chat. So that's Paul Little over on uh, Twitch chat. We've got Icebreaker saying Red Dead Redemption 2 is my number one game. That's amazing. Um, I do love that game as well. In fact, Red Dead Redemption, I lie, sorry. I haven't played Red Dead Redemption 2. You're all gonna um, hate me. I played Red Dead Redemption and that's fantastic. But number two, I haven't given much time because when I do, I want to go through the whole story. Um, and with things like Helldivers and Once Human and stuff like that coming out, it's been such a nightmare. So I'm just buffing up some of this fat wood. You can just buff it really quickly with the back spiny knife. I'm sure you guys all know this, but it's good to just, again, go through it together. And this fat wood is so, so, um, so full of resin. It smells even from here, like pineapple. Jack 
William, I found adulting was quite a labour-intensive game, so no time for gaming nowadays. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the thing, isn't it? Adult life just takes over, and then suddenly you haven't got much time to play games. I always think, oh, I'd love to sit down and do a campaign of this, and then suddenly the evening's gone. Uh, Red Dead 2 has kept me up silly o'clock these last few days, Paul Swin. That's great, I'm actually going to have to give it a blast. Um, maybe we can arrange a little time in the future, um, not straight away with the streams, but when I have a little test out on, on stream um, for my first time with it or something, that could be quite funny. Uh, I can get Tom along to help um, on Discord and we can have a little, little chat while we do it, that would be awesome. Um, Do I play on PC or console? Um, I play on PC, Jack. Um, and Icebreaker is Cameron. Awesome, that's brilliant. Now I know Icebreaker, that is you, Cameron. So I've got Fatwood all nicely buffed up here. Sorry that the exposure is a little bit bright there. We're blessed with a sunny day. Um, you know, you should all beg for it to go away on me. But I'm gonna buff up some of this birch with the actual blade of the knife just to bring a nice powdered starter to this collection of fatwood and pine resin. And that's just something that's going to catch a flame really easily and I can lay the pine fatwood shavings next to that. And this is why a little leather pad like this is so handy, because you're off the wet ground, which is really, really helpful. So now I've got that as well, I'm just going to get some of these twigs all kind of processed. So I've got these birch, thin birch twigs. They're like matchstick thin and really, really dry. I've got my other birch bark here. Lay my knife next to everything and I'll keep these on the dry. Now obviously one thing with a firebox stove is you're limited with space. Um, generally speaking I'd use massive bundles of twigs to get this to get a fire going um, but the bundle of twigs I'd use one of them out of two would be about the size of this grill. So you've got to kind of scale everything down which is again why prep is key. That's why I've got some of these nice bits of birch bark here ready that I can catch off these flames, progress into that on some dry timber, and we should have a kick start that way. So it's getting all of these sticks, long sticks like this, over to camp and process because all of the smaller twigs that break off end up where you're going to be using a fire. So you can then collect and gather those and you're not just dropping them in the bush or dropping them away from camp. So you can start processing different sizes as we go along through this, kind of going from matchstick thin to pencil thickness to finger thickness up to th thumb thickness and then obviously on top of there you can go for some kind of inch and two inch rounds. But we'll get to that stage as and when this all starts to get going. What we don't want to get is halfway through this and think I've got no kindling or tinder. Yes, Scott's pine is very good for stove boxes. Um, in fact, most a lot of pine is. The only reason I'm not going to use pine today is just because I'm going to be grilling the burgers on top. Um, I just don't want any of that um, kind of kerosene um, kind of smoke on the burgers but if I let it I'm just worried about if I put it on a bit before it goes to coals um, if you're burning on coals on pine you're cooking with coals you're generally okay I can already tell this sticks damp on the inside so I'm going to throw that and I'm going to go to this much drier stuff and we're about there with the fire prep now so 
I'll wait for this tiny little breeze that just gusted up to pass through camp and then we'll get going with the fire steel and have a little look at how this oxy grill behaves. Tom in the forest, I spent 600 hours on Red Dead 2. Absolutely love it. That's brilliant. I'm glad there seems to be a nice common interest of kind of gaming um, in them style games anyway, obviously with bushcrafters. It does make sense. It's a little bit of escapism when you are stuck at home. So, I always carry, I light my fire ferro rod, and I'm a, a tip flicker. And what I mean by that is I use my thumb and I draw the flint and steel back to flick the tip and project sparks. Some people use the spine and push down. There's no correct or incorrect way to do it. I just find that tip flicking suits me the best. Um, now hopefully you guys can see this, so I'll just double check chat, if you can see the pad, um, that's really the ideal. Obviously you can see the stove as well, I think we're good. So what we're going to do is get this going with the ferro rod. I normally nuzzle that down onto the pad, I use that as my anchor. Um, you can hover, but what I find is if I hover, the knife tends to, um, if I hover, I put too much pressure on it and then I end up slamming down into my tinder, into my finely prepared gear. So I like to anchor that down, then anchor the knife, and then I can flick the tip very small and burst the uh, tinder everywhere, like I just said. But I can flick the tip very concentrated like that and just shower some sparks down. And there we are, got a flame already. Doesn't take long, especially with fat wood. You see that breeze that I was talking about? But I can transfer that in. Get that fat wood in as well. Get that other birch bark going. And then while that's taken, put my knife away and my ferro rod. Only takes a second, but we've all seen how Joe Robinette um, got stung. And it's easy to be, easy done. Now I can just literally lay my twigs over that, which is a good thing about a stove like this. I don't want to press down. I just want to let the fire find its home. And I want to let the flames naturally rise up through that before I start adding anything. So you can see it's starting to rise through now. I'll start adding a few more tiny bits. We'll start getting the inevitable hiss of the fire crackle. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm obviously, I'm going to move the camera back now in a second. I just wanted to show you that first stage of lighting the fire and share a few little tips that I always find help me when I am doing so. You're absolutely right in what you say about elusive mushrooms, there is such a thing. Oh yes, yeah, the morel is a very hidden mushroom, isn't it? Are there lots over in Russia? All right, I'll move the camera back now. So I'm going to keep the oxy grill bits here to the side. I'm just going to recollect my 
items and belongings. Get everything squared back away. And again, just want to say thank you so much for joining. It's fantastic. I really hope you've been enjoying it. Um, it's a nice way to connect with everyone. And yeah, it's, uh, it's easy to just sit down and watch YouTube videos or edit them. Uh, it's, not, it's not easy getting all this kind of stuff set up, but it makes for a nice interactive kind of episode for you guys. It allows you guys to chat, like I just see Paul and Tom are in the chat. Um, and it's a nice way for people to connect. You know, it's, it's easy to just be um, all commenters sometimes, isn't it? So I'm just going to keep building this up now. And just get a nice bed of coals. And the good thing is with this, I can just keep adding small sticks until I get to a point where the coal base is built up enough that it can take a few bit, a few bigger bits and pieces, which obviously got some dead wood there that I can saw up. Put my tinder back and uh, we'll have a little look in a minute at getting this giveaway sorted. So that might take me a minute or so just to set up. So what I might do in that circumstance, if you can bear with me, is just put you on be right back. You get a little bit of music that way. Um, I will just go onto my phone, set up the giveaways and the parameters for those to run, both on Twitch and YouTube. This is gonna be for one of my homemade soaps. Um, so obviously two soaps given away this stream, one for Twitch, one for YouTube viewers. Um, so at the moment, I think your odds are quite, quite good. Uh, there's also the giveaway on Twitch running uh, Appalachian, Apache Pilot, sorry, Appalachian. It's because you uh, told me how to say Appalachian puppy. Uh, Apache Pilot has just done the command exclamation mark giveaway. That's for the bearskin hoodie. You can redeem your points that you earn through viewing the stream on tickets to win one of those. It's a medium size in Coyote Brown, but if you do require a bigger size, I can probably get them to exchange it. So um, shouldn't be too much of an issue there. Definitely worth entering. Really, really great hoodies. Uh, so yeah, if you give me a few seconds, I will be right back. And then we'll get cooking up some food together and obviously when I'm back there'll be a giveaway running I'll tell you what you've got to enter in chat you'll just have to type that word you'll be entered into the giveaway and we can draw for a lavender and chamomile sleep easy handmade lard soap made by myself it's all packaged up in handmade packaging as well that I make as well stamp it all up myself so really I'm excited to share these with you these are going to be the first ones going out before they go on sale um, so yeah good luck I'll see you in about five minutes, and when I'm back, there'll be a giveaway running for, um, for handmade soap for you guys on YouTube and also for you guys on Twitch. So if you aren't on Twitch and you're just watching on YouTube, you can head over and obviously join. It's completely free. You follow the channel, you instantly get 350 points for the giveaway on the bearskin one. Um, and then you get your first entry free as well. So you get two entries to your bearskin hoodie for free. Um, and it's always free to watch, but if you are on YouTube, obviously you'll get this soap one. So we'll see you in a second. Um, and I will be right back. You're really enjoying the bird sounds. Okay, well, if you would prefer, um, what I can do is go, I will go hang up my microphone. A few, just, uh, just over there. I'll point the camera into the distance, into the woodland, and then I'm just gonna sit on my phone quickly, get this giveaway running, and uh, have a little drink. I'll be right back with you in about two minutes. And the giveaway will be run by Nightbot. Um, so it automatically picks everyone. I don't have to do anything, apart from at the end, I'll roll for the result. So let's get going.
how's that view for you guys? Let, let's see. And we will give you, where should we give you a soundscape from? We'll give you a soundscape from the beech tree.
Right, I'm um, sorry to disturb your lovely relaxing sounds of nature. I just had a little biscuit and a drink while I was getting the giveaway all sorted. So very excited. It should all be up and running now. So let me turn this camera. I've just fed the fire a little bit as well. Right, so you lovely people. Let's have a little look and chat and make sure that it's not all disconnected and you're screaming at me saying, where are you? <laughs> Robin's chiff chaff, nut hatch, the full shebang. Yeah, boy, hearing birds is just so good. OT biscuits, it is amazing. Really, really is lovely. Um, let's have a look at YouTube side of things. It's me, Jamie. Just finished a three night camp and a trip to A&E after putting an ax in my knee on the second day. Had a lovely time. Oh no, buddy. I'm really sorry. I hope you're okay. Um, yeah, axes have a very, very, uh, very nasty way of showing, um, showing themselves when they come like that. I remember, um, they teach you respect quickly, don't they? I remember putting an ax in my ankle one time. Um, so yeah, very, Similar scenario, I really hope it's okay and I hope the damage isn't too bad. Um, and hopefully, um, hopefully it doesn't scare you too much and next time you just uh, take a little bit of time and just, um, you know, we all make mistakes, buddy. I've, I've done it, like I said, I put one straight in my ankle, right next to my heel. Wasn't a pleasant experience at all. So I really hope you're okay and I hope this stream at least helps you fulfill some of that missed trip. Uh, we're gonna be cooking some burgers now in a minute. Um, doing a little giveaway, so maybe you can even My cooker for tonight, this is Paul Rowlands, my cooker for tonight is a birch Swedish candle. I did nick the inside of my finger, so I picked a birch polypore for a plaster and a brew. Brilliant stuff. I always love a, um, a, a like a fire uh, candle, a Swedish rocket stove or um, Swedish fire torch. I'll get my words out. Uh, they are great, great bits of um, kit. In fact, Posh Rat Joe, a really great friend um, and bushcrafter, made a Finnish rocket stove uh, with his auger the other day using a log out of this pine woodland behind us. And although it was a little bit damp, uh, he eventually got it going and it did work for quite some time. And then obviously the brilliant thing is you can then transition that to the fire as a good log to burn. So yeah, really good bits of kit and great ways to, um, to cook as well. I do love them. Uh, and William just says, I've just created a Twitch account for anyone doing the same. You need to author authorize your Twitch account for the hoodie ticket competition. Easy, trouble free, took me about 30 seconds. Well, William, thank you so much for joining over on Twitch. It is a great platform um, and it allows a bit more user interaction than YouTube Live, which is unfortunate because obviously my platform's on YouTube, um, but we can build a community on Twitch that goes hand in hand with YouTube. Um, so in the future, there'll be things like uh, little Twitch only giveaways and the only reason for that is because the infrastructure that the giveaways are built on and some of the sponsorships and stuff don't work with YouTube integration as of yet, but that may change. Um, but this is why I'm trying to do these giveaways. So as of now, guys, there is a giveaway running on both YouTube and Twitch. All you have to do is type the word clean me into chat. One word, clean me. I'll type it into chat now to show you exactly what you've got to type. If you've typed that in the next five minutes, you should then be entered into the giveaway. And if not, um, then we'll do a little bit of work around. So type in what I've just typed, clean me into chat. And this gives you the opportunity to win one of my handmade soaps. Um, and yeah, best of luck to you all. YouTube Live is getting better, just taking its time. Twitch is better for now though, fairy dust. Yeah, no, true Charlotte, it's, um, it's annoying. <laughs> Especially with the rules on uh, Twitch just allowed multi-streaming, which is great, but you're not allowed to put Twitch uh, YouTube chat on Twitch. 
uh, so it can't be displayed. Whereas I can have Twitch's chat up and display it on YouTube, there's no problems. Um, it's just a little bit of a drama. <laughs> And hello, TJ, Tim, JUK8. Great to see you here, buddy. Um, got me up on the TV. That's brilliant. I love that. So we've got a few people entering on the Twitch side saying clean me. Uh, and also people on the YouTube side, make sure you type that in over the next five minutes and then we will roll for the results. Um, how did I refine the recipe for my soap from Spindly Shanks? Um, just a lot of kind of R&D and testing really. Um, making batches that were a bit too soft or a bit too hard and then researching what I can do around that to rectify it whilst not varying from the original recipe too much. So there's certain natural additives like salts, sugars, um, all of those things can aid in certain aspects of saponification or um, the hardness of a soap or how well it lathers up and stuff. So there's loads of different ways to experiment. Um, and then, yeah, just playing around and kind of, it, it's one of these things because soaps have to cure, it's not something that can be rushed, unfortunately, which is why it's taken so long to get it all on the, um, on the kind of on the roll for me because um, even making batches I just means that whereas a company might be able to make 400 blocks in one go and I can only make you know 15 or 30 um, it gets a little bit more difficult and a bit logistically uh, tougher to get it out but just take your time and have a have a little play there's so many variations on soap as well um, pretty much most oils will work and most combinations of oils will work as well a really good bed of embers in that grill now really impressed with it it holds a lovely lovely amount of embers and then the um the triangular base on it just catches it all and creates a nice little hot spot which is great karen's gone wild hello karen i hope you're doing well uh, really nice of you to tune in thank you so much um there's a little giveaway going on right at the moment if you type in clean me one word like everyone is in chat uh, you get a chance to win one of my soaps so good luck really good to see you here karen's got a great channel by the way guys so please do go check her out she's uh, one of the great female outdoors women outdoors women of the uh, uk and it's great to see her flying the flag for that side of bushcraft um there's not many many of you guys girls girls <laughs> not many of you girls out there so um, yeah it's great to see a channel doing it so well and I know um, Karen goes live quite often so definitely go check her out um, yeah it's good to see you in chat also Joe saying make those eggs the best I've tasted ever thank you so much that's brilliant buddy yeah we've got three chickens at home Joe took six eggs back um, so did Tim and Anthony uh, we sent them home with loads because we had a big excess, hadn't done any baking in a while, um, or Ellie hadn't rather. So yeah, sent them off with some eggs and they're always so tasty. They're just uh, nothing compared to the store-bought ones. William Bushcraft UK just followed the channel. Thank you so much, William. Um, I do appreciate it loads. Um, thank you for coming over to Twitch and tuning in. Uh, you're an absolute gentleman. Uh, the giveaway again if you want to join is exclamation mark giveaway in the chat and you can uh, yeah hopefully win a bearskin hoodie let me move the camera down a tiny bit yes i think i'm just out of view let's have a little look Perfect. Oh, 
I'm sure you guys are familiar with the, uh, the game of smoke. When you're out in the woods, it seems to go wherever you are. <laughs> Awesome. Right, so give it a few more minutes for the giveaways. Uh, entrance, if anyone else hasn't entered or has just joined, by typing clean me into the chat, you can enter the giveaway for one of my homemade soaps. What I do like about this grill is actually if any of the logs are, or the sticks are a bit too long, obviously the ends fall off and you can just pick them up and drop them back in, which is really handy. But it's building up a really good bed of coals now and because it's all hardwood based sticks and twigs that I've got, they're going to last for quite some time and the heat won't dissipate. So let me just double check, and excuse me looking at my phone again. At the giveaway, good to see David Chase getting in there. I hope you're doing well, buddy. Um, really good to see you, thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah, get your last little entries in, type clean me in the chat, and hopefully you'll have a chance of winning one of my homemade soaps. Um, for anyone who's just tuned in, we've had a lovely morning filled with technical difficulties. Uh, the first half hour of the stream I couldn't get my camera to turn on so everyone listened to my intro music uh, or the stream starting music for a good little while and I could see conversations striking up in chat which is really nice actually and that's what again this community is all part of um, and the whole idea behind the live streaming bit is to uh, yeah just get a community where people can chat and uh, have a little space to connect and if you want to do that even further as well if you type exclamation mark discord d-i-s-c-o-r-d in chat it'll bring up a link to my discord channel uh, there's not many members on there at the moment but it'd be great uh, little spaces in there for if you're into gaming or if you're into bushcraft you can select what one you like uh, so if you're only into bushcraft you only have to see what's on bushcraft on the server if you like gaming you can also go to the gaming section or if you want both there's both sections there um, and just a little space where you, you can have a little chat with people or share little things you found, um, items or tips and tricks. Really uh, hope, hope to just build a little community there. So, like I said, oh, the Discord link is invalid or is expired. That is always the case. I don't know why they, uh, I think they last for like a month, so I'll update that shortly. I do apologise about that, guys. Um, I will try and get one shortly for you and post it into chat. But let's have a little look at the giveaway. I'll just make sure that we've had some entrance, which we have. It's been tracking the entrance, which is great. Um, so we are going to roll the giveaway on Twitch now. So the last call out for people on Twitch, if you're watching on Twitch now um, and you haven't entered the giveaway, uh, make sure you do type clean me one word into the chat right now and you'll get entered also youtube has been collecting it all so we've got all of the people who have entered on youtube listed on the giveaway so we will go with twitch first like i said there's been one two three four five six seven uh, make eligible Perfect. I was just making my bot not legible. I would hate for the bot to win. That could be quite funny. So we're going to go on Twitch. We're going to roll it and see who won. Oh no, it was Lynch68. That's amazing. Uh, I don't know who that is, but I, I'm, I'm sure it must be someone. Um, if Lynch68 is in the chat and if it's someone who's just monitoring like mum or something, and you want me to re-roll it, just let me know in the next minute or two and we can re-roll that. 
But if it's just someone with the surname Lynch and you're not related to me, then by all means, well done and congratulations. That's quite funny. Um, so now let's go on to YouTube and we've got everyone on YouTube entered. I'm just making sure everyone again is legible and we will roll. There we are. I believe it's a Mr. Cam Little. Mum of PN, not you. So it's not, so it's not you, Mum. So my mum is in chat. Hello, Mum. Um, so Lynch 68, I wonder who that is. Um, what you need to do, basically, I've got your screenshot of the, um, of your username and uh yeah just send me a private whisper uh you can click on my username in chat send me a whisper and dm me your address i'll get the soap sent over to you i'll also send you a message on twitch and make sure we get that over to you and if it does turn out to be one of my family members what i'll do is i'll carry on the um the roll on to the next one because i'll probably just give my family member one anyway because uh, they're all at home anyway so Let's go on to YouTube, like I said, and just uh, take a screenshot of that. It's Cam anyway, I know you Cam. So, well done, Cameron. Yeah, very smoky. Um, <laughs> Cameron, massive well done on winning that. That is a lavender and chamomile soap, and also Lynch 68, congratulations on winning. Um, that's awesome, lavender and chamomile handmade soaps. So, no worries at all. It's amazing that you've got um, the same surname as well. It confused me for a minute because I thought, wait, is that my mum? <laughs> um, but brilliant. No, you're more than welcome. And um, yeah, send me a message either on Instagram or on um, Twitch is probably best just so it's got your username there and I can verify it's you. It's called a whisper, not a message. And you can send me your address. I'll get that shipped and straight over to you. And well done, Cameron. Um, really happy that that all worked well. And yeah, thank you for tuning in for that little giveaway, guys. Um, we'll do another one in a short little while for a patch. Um, and yeah, that will be quite fun. In fact, I'll show you the patches now. I didn't bring the soaps out because obviously I didn't want the soaps to get all muddy or uh, the packaging to get um, ruined. But we've got the two Primal Nomad patches here, Velcro backed. I'll bring them closer to the camera. So hopefully two of you guys can win one of these. And um, yeah, it'd be awesome. Just a little bit of support from me to you guys um, as a thanks for the support you're showing me joining on the live streams. And I'll be doing little giveaways like this for the first four streams. And then that's not gonna stop, um, but they'll just become a bit, little bit less frequent. But for the first four streams, there'll be these kind of little giveaways. So. If you want to share the stream, um, let some of your friends know, that'd be awesome. I know it's a bit more competition for you guys, um, but it'd be great to get it um, buzzing in here and a little bit interactive with loads of different people, more people for you to chat and meet as well. Um, so yes, time for food, I believe. I'm going to pack my Tinder away. In my tinder pouch we're getting a really good bed of embers there it's getting really nice and hot white hot ash all over it congratulations cam and uh, lynch 68 no excuses to be smelly anymore please let us know when the soap is for sale, spindly shanks. I will do 100%. Um, I'm just fine tuning the last little bits of uh, the website stuff and getting everything packaged and batched up. Um, there's a lot of kind of batch numbering and stuff to do and then weighing and because everything's handmade, I've got, it's just, um, well, I'm making sure I do everything properly and hopefully it'll be in the next few weeks, I'd imagine. Um, I'll definitely make an announcement throughout my Kind of social media platforms and also on stream as well um, and probably when the shop goes live there'll also be another giveaway as well so um yeah some little opportunities coming up for you guys to get your hands on some of those and wash off the the weekend's wood smoke and bush 
from when you've been out on trips with a nice uh, handmade product and they are really good they last a long time as well so they're not something you're going to have to purchase all too often if it is a soap that you do enjoy using Food and battery checks. Yes, 100%. I'll message you on Instagram, as you know me. Yes, 100% Cam. Definitely send me a, a message with your address. Um, I'm sure Ellie's got it from the bits that you've kindly bought off of her with her pottery adventure as well. So, um, and I hope they're serving you well. I know she would too as well. So yes, I'm gonna do a quick battery check again. Um, and then if you give me five minutes, we'll get to be right back and I'm gonna go get a few more twigs, bits and pieces. Gives you guys time to go get a brew. Um, then I'm gonna get some food on and then we'll probably get another giveaway for the patches going. And don't forget if you are just new here on Twitch and you just joined uh, or on YouTube Live, I'm out having a lovely day trip on my first ever live stream um, using a little broadcast system that I've worked quite hard on and yeah just having a really nice time there's a few technical difficulties this morning but we've got the fire going now bedding to a nice good set of coals we're going to get a burger going there is a giveaway available on twitch just type in exclamation mark giveaway and you can have a chance to win a bearskin v3 hoodie um, really amazing fleeces very windproof and um, yeah you get your first two tickets free so I will see you guys very shortly. I'm going to switch scenes and
Hello. <laughs> So, hey guys, um, thanks for pausing with me for a second there. Batteries are good, we're on about 50%, so uh, we're probably about, yeah, I'd say halfway through the stream about now, which isn't too bad. I think we've had a, a really nice time so far and it's been um, really nice to have you guys join in along with me. Um, I'm looking forward to getting these burgers going, or this burger going. I've only bought one burger out because it's only a little lunchtime thing. Um, but I probably will have a little snack as well. I've got a spatula that I'm going to be using that Ellie made me. Uh, I love this thing, really good. You can see I've used it quite a bit. That was one of her first spatulas, I think. So really nice little bit of carving um, by her. I've got some jerky, not steak detective, unfortunately. That stuff's my favorite, and I never have enough of it. I always go through it too quickly. Um, and then I've got my burger here, other food. I've got also a crunchy bar. Can't beat a crunchy. Um, so I might have the jerky first. I mean, any of you guys got a favorite snack for when you're out in the woods? I always find that the hardest thing. Um, little snacks. I think flavour on the trail is so important. Chris Outdoors, afternoon. I've just come back from the woods, cooked a lovely beef stew. Oh, that's amazing, buddy. I love a stew. Yeah, really good and warming, especially this time of year. And it's just something you can kind of do all the prep with, take your time doing the prep, put it in a pot, spend your time by the fire, get on with other things and know that it's cooking away. Flavour on the trails, <laughs> next year's wrap. Yeah, I love that, that's a good little name. <laughs> Harry Bow, yeah. Haribo is always a winner. In fact, we made some small little gummies um, with gelatin and fruit juice the other week, and then a small dusting of um, vitamin C powder over the top. And you don't need much of that stuff, it's really sharp. Um, but they were so tasty, I need to make some more of those. So I'll do a little stream maybe making some of those or a little video. Maybe actually you'll be able to stream making sausages for you as well, Paul. <laughs> I still need to do a video for you on that. Jack Whiskey 0101 says sounds great. Hobnobs. You live up to your username, Oti Biscuit. <laughs> you certainly do. I love that. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm a hobnob man. Steak Detective Pineapple Beef Jerky is fantastic. So, so tasty. Yes, Karen over on YouTube also agrees that the, uh, the pineapple one is fantastic. Backroads Nomad, um, good day. Hello, hope you're doing well. Um, we're just enjoying a lovely afternoon here in England. Weather's holding back, which is lovely. I've got the power point set up behind just in case the rain came in. But I've got a little Otzi grill here, which is like a firebox stove, I'm about to cook up some burgers. So in a second, I'm gonna get the grill on just when the flames have died down. I'm gonna season it up with a bit of oil and we'll get the burger on there. I've got some Monterey Jack cheese, which is a firm favourite of mine. Um, rarely ever get that, and I found a, um, a producer of it over here in the UK. Um, you can buy like quarter wheels, half wheels, or full wheels. Um, I went for the quarter, um, because as much as I love cheese, I hate seeing it go to waste. So I'm ploughing through that at the moment, um, and it's, yeah, a firm favourite. <laughs> 
But yeah, thank you so much, Backroads, for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Currently got a State Detective Lancashire Regiment Hot Pot MRE for my next solo camp. Oh, awesome, buddy. Yeah, the, um, the rations are really, really good. Always tasty. Fill the hole and um, just saves all that washing up, don't they? Really, really handy bits of kit. All right, so I'm going to bring the camera down a little bit. So we can see the cooking shenanigans. Pick up my jerky litter. <laughs> Put that back in there. I'm sorry if the bit rate's a bit low at the moment. Um, I'll try and move the pack. Hopefully that should be a little bit better for you guys, um, view-wise. So it needs to go more towards this. No, I need to move back a little bit. <laughs> that should be better for you guys to see. I think very hard to tell <laughs> now I just need to get my oil which is in my other backpack I'm going to spread those embers out. Perfect. Now I'm just going to spray the grill with some oil. Just so it doesn't stick. And we'll get that slotting into this grill here. We'll wait for that oil just to heat up and we can get a nice beef burger on there. I'm going to slightly flatten it in the pack just so it takes a little bit less time to cook because they do come quite thick burgers from the store. We have bison jerky, nothing better. Oh man, bison jerky. Do you know what? We had bison, uh, I had bison once, my father and I, when we went to a powwow in Virginia when I was very young. Um, I just remember how massive they were, but the beef was in, uh, the beef, the bison meat, sorry, was incredible. Uh, and I believe it's got no cholesterol. So that's amazing. Um, Tom in the forest. Sorry, Liam, got to leave camp now, so we won't be able to watch. Good luck to people on the giveaway. An awesome first live stream. Hopefully we'll see more of this. Take it easy, dude. Tom in the forest, thank you so much. Um, I really do appreciate you tuning in and um, being one of the first ones to wait and watch uh, while I got all the technological um, nightmare sorted. Thank you so much for tuning in, buddy, and I hope to catch up with you soon. Uh, Backroads Nomad, viewing from Montana, Idaho, Northwest USA. Oh, that's amazing. Um, really, it is a universal language, bushcraft. Um, and I can't honestly thank you so much um, for coming in and tuning in. And there's some really great people in on the chat there um, from my neck of the woods. 
and some other great bushcrafters. So um, definitely um, feel free to chat to any of them. I'm also streaming on Twitch as well, um, I'm running a few giveaways. Um, so there'll be one coming up for a morale patch if you stick around on Twitch but, uh, and YouTube. But also if you are on Twitch, there's a bearskin hoodie giveaway going away as well. But thank you so much for tuning in all the way from Montana. Uh, that's amazing. I'm very jealous of your neck of the woods. And I know Tom Backgarden Bushcraft, who's also the host of the Wodesman podcast with me. He's always talking about um, America since he's been back from his trip. I know it's uh, one of those kind of pilgrimages that we must do together. Um, so yeah, really glad to know that you're enjoying the stream from over there. Yeah, Apache Pilot, um, the simplicity of this grill is by far one of the most attractive things about it. I mean, like I said, I've got a hot plate here as well. So if I wanted to do something on top of this or to toast buns, for example, like that heat is gonna pass up through that anyway. So I could put a little bit of oil on there and toast my bun or, um, you know, it's pretty tempting. <laughs> but I might do that nearer the end. Once I flip the burger, really really nice and versatile and the bed of coals because it's got that v shape seems to hold it quite well really nice bit of heat coming up through that as well so that's sizzling away really well i'll bring the microphone nice and close for a bit of grill asmr Yeah, 100%. I do think um, that's definitely what it's designed for, little skewers. But yeah, you're right. Um, venison and peppers would be amazing. Or capsicum, if uh, anyone's watching from Australia. Come on over. I'll show you some beautiful scenery and mountain bushcraft hospitality. Oh, buddy. Um, <laughs> you don't have to twist my arm. Obviously, I will go back home. I don't want to be an illegal immigrant or anything. But yeah, I would. I would be so sad to leave. Um, but that is a really kind invite of you. Thank you so much, um, Karen. Um, the grill is called. I will show you quickly on camera because it is a lovely bit of kit. It's the Otzi Adventure Gear Spark. So the Spark, I think, is their smaller one. Uh, but I think it's a perfect size for these kind of wild camping adventures. Uh, really versatile and a little bit easier to use than a firebox because it's a bit longer, a bit wider, gives you a bit more access. So yeah, really nice bits of kit. The Otzi Adventure Gear Spark. Back garden bushcraft. Uh, what did you say, buddy? Liam, this stream is really helping me stay motivated while I'm up to my elbow in oven cleaning and doing DIY. Oh, that's amazing, buddy. Um, that's music to my ears. I can't honestly uh, say how grateful I am to you guys tuning in. And yeah, I often watch streams myself. Uh, I've got a few streamers that I enjoy watching. Uh, they're gamers, but nevertheless, some of them are really great. One of them's Fuzzy Bond, uh, absolute top guy. And I often listen to his Twitch stream as a podcast in the background, kind of just while I'm doing things. And the, uh, the conversation and the sounds and the laughs always get me going. Um, so yeah, really happy to hear that it's helping you out on your DIY day. So good luck, buddy. Hope uh, it's not too laborious for you, especially on your day off, bank holiday Monday, which I do appreciate every one of you guys and girls coming in and tuning in for that, uh, for this stream, sorry. William, I watch Larson's farm a lot, back roads. That space you have over the pond is so good to see. Here in the UK, you are lucky to have posted size, bit of nature to stand on without getting the fine. Yeah, that's so true, buddy. 
So, so true. I've been teaching wilderness self-reliance skills since 1978. I really appreciate others, especially in their countries, get involved in the outdoors and outdoor lifestyle. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. So you've really got some history in um, something that we're all very passionate about, bushcraft and the outdoors. Uh, and it would be great to share a fireside chat with you um, and share skills because I'm sure there's plenty that you've got and that's one of the great things about going to learn in different countries I think uh, you get exposed to all different kinds of environments and trees and plants um, and there's so much information to learn just giving it a little blow under there because the ash covers the embers over, easily done. So it's good to agitate that a tiny little bit. I'm just gonna have a little look and see how this is doing. Oh, look at that. Don't know if you can see that, but that is some beautiful grill marks on there. Generally speaking, I don't want flame, but you've got to pick it up a tiny little bit when you're burning like this. There we are. Get that sizzle back. Really impressed with how I've got the grill stripes on that burger. I don't even achieve that at home. <laughs> Am I going to the bushcraft show this year? Um, yeah, Karen, I am, 100%. And it would be uh, great if you're going as well to catch up again. Um, I hope to see you there. It's always such a great little pilgrimage. And um, yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a good year this year. Loads of good people coming. Joe Price, um, Ida Olsen, over from Sweden, obviously. Um, so yeah, very excited to see all that. I bet the fox, local fox is enjoying that scent. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, who knows, if I do a little predator call, we might get something coming and having a little look. Sean. Yes, yes, Liam. I enjoy watching your content, geez. As a lad of your age, give or take, I'd like to have a camp and a chat, maybe write some bars for a track. I love your style, bro, top lad. <laughs> oh yes, bro. <laughs> Brilliant, really great to, um, have you here sean thank you so much for tuning in uh, that always sound that's always good fun sounds good making music i love it um it's just a little bit of fun you know the bushcraft rap stuff but uh yeah it's it's always good fun to just have a little spit around the fire or something like that so um yeah definitely would be great to catch up at some point and i really appreciate all your support with the channel and for you tuning in buddy I'm just uh, cooking up some burgers at the moment. I'm just very gently prompting those embers back. Um, a little film of ash coats over, so you've just got to blow it off occasionally to re-establish a little bit of heat on the grill. And I'm just moving the burger around just to get it cooked through. And then probably I'll add some cheese on top of that and uh, get it into a bun. It's gonna be good, really excited. Shuffle those embers down to one end. That's really starting to cook lovely, that burger now. I love the bird sound here. Just while that's finishing, <clears throat> Just while that's finishing, I'll give you a little, little kind of view of how camp's looking. Lovely and still here at the moment. Really feels like spring's kind of arrived. It's 
gorgeous, really is lovely. So nice to have you guys here with me as well. <clears throat> Jack Whiskey will be my first visit to the Bushcraft Show this year. Oh, brilliant. You're going to have a great time, mate. It is a, a fantastic event. Uh, loads and loads of people, really busy, loads of stores um, and great talks. It's, it's really nice. Uh, and it's great to just be surrounded by like-minded individuals as well. Yeah, it won't be long we'll be able to ditch the winter rigs and supplies 100%. Paul, I apologise for night bot timing you out there. I will um, edit the rules later. It shouldn't uh, pick you up for emotes like that. So I apologise on that behalf. Yeah, the Wild and Us Festival, um, that was a really hard decision by all of us guys. Um, but it's for the best. Uh, we will make a much better show out of it next year. Um, it just, it's something we didn't want to rush. Um, we learned a lot after last year, um, but it will be going ahead next year. Uh, just needed a bit more time and thought and uh, money really going into it. So we want to just make sure we put ahead the best show we can, get some good guests there, good things for you guys to get in, involved with as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, hopefully good things come to those who wait and hopefully it'll be a success but um, I really appreciate the sentiment though because it would have been great to have put it on. So on back road, eight years old, two of my biggest bushcraft mentors were Moors Kachansky and Tom Roycraft for bow hunting was Fred Bear. Well dude, that is incredible. I mean, um, yeah, Moors is yeah renowned for his his impact in bushcraft um and of course fred bear tom back on in bushcraft um he has in fact uh really fell in love with fred bear's uh, legacy and has a compound and a crossbow by uh the fred bear company so uh, i know they're astounding bits of kit and he was a great hunter and avid outdoorsman so it really sounds like you've got a great bit of history um, and background uh, by some real true legends in the scene as well. So it'd be great to have a little chat with you. Um, maybe hit me up a message sometime on Instagram. It'd be great to connect with you. And um, yeah, just uh, all the way over there in Montana as well. It's like I said, a different neck of the woods and there's so much to learn. Hello, Cedric. Um, great to see you, buddy. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for tuning in, mate. Yes, Karen, uh, Wild and Us will be back and better next year. Uh, I really appreciate the sentiment as well. Uh, it would be really good to have you help out. I mean, um, especially with some of the girly bits as well, getting that female touch. <laughs> Do you appreciate the hospitality at the festival? Nice to hang with you and the crew. That's so good, buddy. I mean, that's what it's all about, kind of widening the bushcraft family and uh, just getting out there, enjoying um, enjoying people's company because it can get a bit lonely sometimes going out and doing solo camps and uh, we don't want it to be a clicky thing. That was the complete reason the Wild and Us Festival was born. There doesn't need to be a click in bushcraft. Everyone's there for their own personal reasons, but it's just a common interest. If someone wants to have a survival knife, um, you know, a bit bigger than your bushcraft blade, it's fine, doesn't really matter. Um, as long as we're all following the same kind of ethos about respecting nature and enjoying it and being kind to each other and courteous, that's what it's all about, isn't it? So um, that's what makes things like that and the community camps and stuff special because you get to meet and uh, catch up with people and um, break down those kind of boundaries that videos although they're nice to put out on YouTube, um, it doesn't have that personal touch, which is nice, again, about the live stream as well. 
my burger is about done. I'm going to open up my paper and get my bread bun open. We've got some Monterey Jack cheese here. So I'm just going to put that on top just to warm through. And I've got a bit on the bottom. And then I have, <laughs> and everyone laughs when they see this, a little carabiner with some sauce, a little sauce bottle on the carabiner. These are great. They're by Reasons to Season. Uh, they're actually a little local market to me. So I picked them up and this one's Chipotle sauce. Uh, it's got to be done. Uh, but you know what I did forget? And I'm gutted, uh, an onion or a spring onion. I thought I'd put it in there, but it's, it's done me dirty and left itself in the fridge. Didn't pack itself away, did it? <laughs> so, just trying to reconnect to my chat are you in a local woodland or privately owned it looks uh, looks beautiful very similar to the eastern US um, yes yeah, so this is a private woodland um, kind of private public public access private woodland um, it's owned by like a, a duke and it's part of a huge estate where there's hundreds and hundreds of acres of woodland and this is a spot that I've been coming to for many years um, and always respecting you'd probably never know I'd ever been here um, and yeah it's just somewhere quiet um, and it's why I tend to especially on stuff like this use a little stove uh, respect the area and I've never come across anyone in here and if I have, they've always just been very fascinated with what, what I'm up to and very impressed with how respectful we are. And I think that's all we can aim to do as bushcrafters. It's a shame we haven't got as much private or public land as, as you guys do have over in the US uh, backwards. <laughs> you playing mum for forgetting the onion. <laughs> To be honest, I was flapping around because my camera wouldn't turn on this morning and I was literally, and I drove up to the entrance of the woodland and I was like, pressing my camera and I was like, right, right. <laughs> then I had to go all the way home because the cables are held in with an Allen key kind of attachment uh, to stop the cables moving. So yeah, lo and behold, I got all of that done camera worked and I forgot the onion so it's just so I'm gonna get this burger off just gonna give it a little cut inside to check there's no pink Whew, that's hot Nope, no pink, and the cheese is really nicely melted on top. So we'll get some chipotle sauce. I'm going to whack that off. And whack some smaller kindling on that. <coughs> Just to flash this up, there's a lot of heat still in it, but it's nice to get a little bit of flame coming through. I can get a load of smoke in my face that way. <laughs> oh, you're hungry now. No way. I'm sorry, buddy.
so I've got some chipotle sauce, like I said. I'm pretty excited for that. Um, it's a real sweet one. It's got a tiny little kick to it. You can see how well that grill performs. There was really not much um, ember base left in that, but it's starting to really pick back up. Um, in fact, I'll move the camera down a tiny bit because you probably can't see that, and I do apologize. If you can't see something in frame, don't hesitate to spam me on the chats just to say anything. A couple, I cooked a couple of burgers up a little while ago because of this stream. <laughs> I hope you biscuits. That's amazing, buddy. I love that. I hope you enjoyed them. I think between you and Back Garden Bushcraft, with all your cooking and hunting skills, you can make a good outdoor cooking show. That'd be amazing. I'd love that. The Wiseman Kitchen. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> Sean, come to Hertfordshire. I have land we can camp on. Write a song or songs. Have a laugh, brother. Shout me back if you're interested, bro. Yeah, definitely hit me up, Sean. Um, send me a message on Instagram. Um, it's quite busy this time of year for me with work and stuff, but definitely could find something, a space, I'm sure, to meet up and have a little camp. Um, really great to hear from you, dude, and I do appreciate the extension of the offer. There is a big road here right there. Woo! Oh, I can't get it. That was a beast. Gold medal. He ran as soon as, as, soon as I, um, he's over there, his little white tail flashing. So, that answers the question of, was it road droppings? Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, damn. Literally. That was just, you can hear him kicking around. That was gold medal road buck. He's, he's thrashing a bit over there. Wow, I've never seen a roe deer in this woods. So that definitely shows that the droppings when we walked in earlier that we found were probably roe deer. Um, I knew they were bigger than muntjac. Wow, he was huge. What a monster. Real white anal tush, um, which is the back patch, back patch on a roe deer. Um, really distinct. Um, and really, really big, long um, antlers with the, the uh, pedicles were all really gnarly. They were, that was really good coloration on that as well. I wish I'd uh, brought up my phone and taken a picture, but I kind of just instantly was like, ah, oh, no, <laughs> I need to get my camera. Didn't really think that through. So next time I'll try and um, use my phone. I just completely forgot it was there. I just wanted to, you guys to catch a glimpse of that. He was a beast, but burger. Yeah, 100%, buddy. It's um, it's uh, nice to see evidence of roe deer in this neck of the woods. Uh, like I said, it's not really something I've come across in the, I, well, I haven't never come across a roe deer in this woodland before. Um, and he was a he was a good size, so nice to see that he's uh, been hiding away here for some time, probably. Um, Backroads Nomad, do you have any type of youth outdoor wilderness education organisations? Here we have Boy Scouts for youngsters to begin their wilderness scouts for education. Um, yeah, we do have the Scouts and the Cubs. The Cubs and the Scouts are great, uh, great kind of organisations over here that do get people into the outdoors and camping, wilderness skills and stuff. And it's actually 
one of the ways that I started, I was a scout. Um, I wasn't a cub, but I was a scout. And through that, uh, started really loving the outdoors. Always had loved the outdoors anyway, but it just got me exposed to it a bit more, which was great. Got some dirt time, did some amazing and fantastic trips. Um, and yeah, then the other, probably the other one is like Duke of Edinburgh. We have, when you're in school, people can do the Duke of Edinburgh Awards. Uh, that's great. Again, I didn't actually do that. Um, I never found out about it until people were doing the bronze and I was thinking, oh no, I would have loved that. <laughs> but that's kind of, um, yeah, apart from that, there's not really any more national outdoor education centers that I'm aware of, but there's a lot of forest schools popping up now, which is great. Have I got any wild garlic nearby to replace the onion? Unfortunately, in this bit of the woods, no. Um, the nearest wild garlic, and it's actually three-cornered leek, is the other side of a kind of swampy marshland to me. So it's probably only about a five or 10 minute walk, um, but just traversing through that with all this gear might be a bit of a, a hassle. So I'm going to probably just chill, eat my burger for a little bit. Um, I might hang my microphone just up there so you don't hear my uh, just constant chewing. Awesome, you saw a row dude. Hopefully you'll get to see it on our next camp, eh? Yeah, 100% buddy. That was a beast. Honestly, a, a, a beast. And uh, yeah, he'll be a little bit spooked of this area for a little while, but obviously I won't be back here. So um, he'll be able to come and assert his dominance, kick up the ground a little bit, um, centre up and uh, feel boss of the woods again. So really great to see him. And I might try and get a trail camera set up because he was gorgeous. So thank you again as well if you just tuned in um, on Twitch side. Really do appreciate you coming and tuning in. After I've eaten this burger, I'm going to um, run a giveaway for one of my morale patches so both on twitch and youtube both platforms get a chance to win one and i'm just scouting for more road <laughs> um, and yeah then obviously if you're watching on twitch don't forget to type in exclamation mark giveaway and you can see the giveaway being drawn for the bearskin hoodie which will be on the fourth stream um, but you've got a chance to buy some tickets up until then uh, Give a little shout out to my son, Billy, and wife, Chloe. They are Sean. Um, Sean's wife, Chloe, and little boy, Billy. Massive shout out from Primal Nomad here. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I haven't managed to find any chaga yet, Paul. No, um, I haven't found any chaga in this woodland, although it could, could possibly be here. Um, I know Tom found some even further south than me. so. right of me to say it's not likely to be here but you're more likely to find it up in Scotland um, in that kind of boreal northern hemisphere area um, and they cut the woodland down so that was very sad um, have you ever been to any of Raymere's courses or seminars Woodlaw courses, um, fundamental, fundamental bushcraft, um, and was lucky enough to met Ray on both of those trips. Um, so that was when I was a real young lad, and that just reinforced my love for it even more. Um, I remember I was putting up my tarp and I was doing the taut line hitch, like we've been taught to do, and I was wrenching it back, and it was still a little bit sloppy because I'm quite a, was quite a weak little twig of a boy. Um, and Ray just came over and he just <laughs> did it in this almighty tug and ripped it. And it was, you know, you could play a guitar tune on it. It was amazing. Um, and his seminars, again, really, really good. It's one of the great things about going to the Bushcraft show. Um, you, he's actually going to be attending and does quite often a really good talk there. Um, so, yeah, really nice opportunities. And he is a lovely, lovely man, very knowledgeable um, and probably uh, my kind of, you know, my kind of idol in the bushcraft world is where I started. So I've got massive respect for him and love his documentaries. Um,
He really is a big guy, you know, very tall. Just hook the mic up here so you get the sound. I will not turn the camera and then because I don't turn the camera the roe deer will turn up but we can just chill by the fireside together. I'm gonna have this burger. No, that's fine. I'm, uh, I'm glad you let me know, dude. Thank you, I really appreciate that. This is what it's all about. Um, I rely on you guys to be the eyes and ears of my stream. <laughs> it's funny because I can't actually see, um, I can't see what my camera sees at all. I'm fully in the blind. In the blind, in the dark, <laughs> making up new words, new sayings. Sorry that it timed you out there, Roti Biscuits. Um, I don't know. There we are. I apologise about that, ladies and gentlemen. That was the HDMI cable and the modem touching, which, uh, yeah, screws with the signal of the HDMI cable because they're not RF shielded. <laughs> what a nightmare.
take care Sean I hope you have a good walk I hope Lola gets a nice stretch of the legs and yeah again shout out to your son Billy take care buddy um, who were are some of my mentors um, names um, can't remember the last name Adam from Woodlaw um, also Sarah Day she was fantastic uh, really good um, who was the other uh, there was another lady I can't remember can't remember her name either it's really bad I will remember they'll come to me in about half an hour or something but no Sarah Day was one of those she's fantastic she was helping I think on one of the uh, fundamental courses with Woodlaw um, and yeah that was a fantastic experience that's where I first did bow drill actually um, started off tandem uh, yeah really good fun and great memories of those kind of days back at the doing bushcraft in the school kind of setting it's uh, it's been too long actually um, and a lot of my mentorship has just been through like reading books and uh, self-experimentation really uh, like yourself I've been doing this years um, years and years just since I was a young child kind of coming out and just playing around really um, so very lucky to have this kind of woodland quite near me to be able to do that Yes, Apache Pilot, it is. <laughs> Most definitely. I'll just keep looking out for him, you can probably see. I'm looking out for any movement or any sound. I'm, I was so engulfed in kind of talking to you guys that when I glanced and I saw him and he, he was stepping in, strutting, like really proud, thinking, who's that? And I did the stupid thing, obviously, of like getting up and straight going for the camera, so he darted off. Whereas if I just slowly raised the phone, I probably could have got a shot to show you guys. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's definitely uh, on the back of my mind now. Oh yes, sorry, Ot. Um, so in regards to hunting, I I've always said there's a little bit of a taboo when it comes with hunting over here in the UK or it feels like a little bit of a closed door sometimes but I think um, I think a lot of that's to do with you know the hunting scene isn't grouse shooting or pheasant shooting or partridge shooting um, that is its own rightfully so important field sport but I think Deer stalking for me was where I really started to notice there's a few different types of stalker. Uh, there's the kind of commercial park side setting or big estate where it's just big coals and uh, which is all important parts of management. Um, or there is the kind of kind of out on the edge of the wilder spaces like up in Scotland where I was really lucky to go with the, the lucky hunter. Um, there are certain outfits that are more akin to a beginner but also give you that kind of feeling of being a bit more free because it's not it's not everyone's cup of tea just pulling up in a Land Rover getting out putting out the stick shooting a deer chucking it in the back of the wagon and then being off although we're limited to space over here in the UK so in America you could do a lot more Steve Rinella style hunting on public land um, and it might be a few day trip over here that's less common but it can't it doesn't say it can't be achieved so I'd just say have a little look at kind of uh, local outfits near you and local estates that might be able to help you move forward with that there's also things like the lucky hunter they run some amazing competitions where you can win stalks guided stalks and outings um, and it only costs you the price of a ticket if you're lucky enough to win uh, that's how I did my one in Scotland uh, two years ago and without that I probably wouldn't have been able to experience that rogue gold medal buck um, definitely not a gold medal buck anyway so it, there are certain ways to get into it but I think as well watching shows like um, Meat Eater, listening to the Steve Rinella Meat Eater podcast they're, they're great, there's also the Field Sports Network over here the shooting show on YouTube um, and 
yeah, I think it's it's hard to get into sometimes because it can be quite expensive. But there are places um, that will accept you. You just got to got to get over that first outing and just just be yourself. Um, it's it's like anything meeting someone for the first time, especially when there's a gun involved. It's quite uh, a lot of responsibility, not only on you as the stalker, but as the person guiding you as well. Tim, thank you so much um, for tuning in. I appreciate you uh, joining in on the chat and stuff like that, and I hope to see you again at some other point. Take care, buddy. I actually found my game prep playlist enjoyable from way back when. Oh, thank you, buddy. Yeah, I, I, uh, I miss doing those kind of videos, and it's something that I probably will uh, go to do a little bit more of. Um, I'm going to be doing a wild boar soon, so I'll definitely be doing a game prep of that. Lashing rain here, so I'm out back under the porch playing at being in the woods. Have my mess stove going and we'll be having a coconut latte, Danny, Gawley says. Well, enjoy your, enjoy your coconut latte, my man. Um, I hope this at least gives you some of the feelings and sounds of the wood. Backwoods Nomad, um, how do I hunt? Uh, rifle. The powers that be, unfortunately, won't allow us to bow hunt over here in the UK. Um, so we are highly constricted to rifles. And funnily enough, they much prefer you to have a sound moderator on a rifle here. And I know over in the States it can be a little bit more difficult to get sound moderator, but over here it's, um, it's easier to get a gun with a sound moderator. Uh, and that is just because of how um, densely populated we are and for the lack of disturbance and um, and also to do with um, your own safety as well it's good to not get tinnitus um, from shooting isn't it as well so yeah unfortunately I'd love to bow hunt um, you can bow hunt in some of the continent in France um, Spain etc so I do definitely want to get over there and um, explore that avenue because I've done a lot of archery um, I'm quite competent in archery but really my only want to do it is to bow hunt so it'd be nice to know that you could do that so i could get back into practicing and getting that up to square burn off this bit of paper That was a lovely, lovely burger. <laughs> it really, really was. Um, and thank you for joining me as I cooked it and ate it. I hope it didn't make you too hungry. That's a good thing about bringing a paper bag with you rather than plastic. Um, you can just obviously burn that straight away. You're with me in spirit, Liam. Thank you, Danny, and me also. I hope it's well over there in, in a wet old island for you. Apache Pilot says, take Tom and his new toys. Yeah, 100%. Tom's got all the kit. For America. And rightfully so. I mean, um, if, if end of times ever come, uh, Tom's definitely got sorted. No. Oh. I thought I saw some movement there. I'm just, like I said, keeping an eye out for that row, although I don't think he'll be back anytime soon. But he might, he might be curious. So, if you guys can give me, again, another few minutes, I'm gonna just be right back from the stream. Um, I'm gonna just have a quick drink got a little can of coke that I'm going to have, check the batteries, make sure everything's okay and literally in a few seconds I'll be back, uh, it gives you a chance to just run to the bathroom or anything, not that you're forced to watch this, you can go at any time obviously, <laughs> but no, go make yourself a brew, um, 
and in the future in periods like this this will probably be when I run little advert breaks so I do apologize if there's little adverts interrupting the stream every now and again I will try and confine those to a predetermined time on the stream in the future when I do a little be right back so enjoy the music I'll see you very shortly um, if it laps you and shows you up behind the tarp I promise not to let you know <laughs> I wonder why bow hunting laws are in place. Does anyone know? Um, so, bow hunting laws, I believe it's a kind of an archaic law uh, that never got repealed because the person in the 60s who was meant to repeal it left the papers at home. So they were going to reintroduce it or re-allow it to be back on the tables. That never got pushed forward and now People are so anti-hunting in the UK that, um, you know, let alone um, bow hunting, they don't even want you managing actual vermin anymore really over here. So it's, it's a bit of a hard battle, but um, yeah, a good discussion to be had um, and something I'm very keen on because I feel bow hunting is a very fair game as well. But I will be right back guys ladies and gentlemen um oh and just before i do lundy thank you so much for tuning in buddy i uh, appreciate you coming in uh hello uh lundy's got a great channel guys um do go check him out really fantastic outdoorsman bushcrafter camper and yeah thank you so much for tuning in buddy i'm literally just about to have a two or three minute break i'm just going to have a quick refreshing kind of little uh, can of coke i'll show you guys what i've got actually a little snack wise um i've got some fruit shortcake and yeah fruit shortcakes the old mcfitties good biscuits i have a crunchy and i do have a little can of coke in my backpack so i'm going to grab that um, just check the batteries and I'll be right back. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you've been enjoying the stream so far and if you have um, Just joined there'll be a little giveaway in a second Once I am back for one of my morale patches and if you are on twitch type exclamation mark giveaway to join the giveaway um, For a bearskin hoodie Tom. I just saw your message back on and bushcraft Everyone, back on Bushcraft, great channel on YouTube, go check him out. Um, he's co-host with me on the Wodesman podcast. And yeah, really appreciate you tuning in, buddy. And I will see you soon. You take care. It's just not changing scenes for one second. So if you give me one second.
Right, I'm not sure if it is working just yet. I think I'm still on the Be Right Back page, but hopefully um, it comes back on to live chat any second now, because it has been a nightmare. There we are, thank you. Yeah, I can't tell, um, sometimes my um, scene switching doesn't notify me so then i think i've gone from be right back to live and i'm just chatting to be right back <laughs> so it's happened a few times on the test streams thank you so much um i just saw an awesome little um comment on youtube chat saying wood smoke self-reliance hello all this channel just popped up in my feed first time watching how's everyone doing um thank you so much for tuning in buddy uh, yeah, we've had a lovely morning, just uh, walked into the woods, had a few technical difficulties at first, um, which is always the case. This is my first official live stream, although I've been doing YouTube for quite a while, um, sharing all sorts of bushcraft adventures over here in the UK. Um, but no, been set up today just with the plow point. I've had the little Otzi grill going and I cooked up a burger, so that was really nice. Um, and yeah, just about kind of about to do a giveaway, probably wrapping things up in the next hour or so. Um, but yeah, had a really lovely time and thank you so much for coming in and checking out the stream. I do appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy what time we do have left. Um, thank you so much for subscribing as well. Uh, really is appreciated. Um, yeah, it's a really lovely spot, uh, Pagan Outdoors and really good to see you, buddy. Hope you're doing well. It's been a long time uh, and yeah, I hope you enjoy uh, the last little bit of the stream. The only thing that holds me back from streaming for any longer is actually, uh, and obviously the camera and power back batteries. Um, this setup uses quite a lot of power, um, but we're about 25% left. So we've still got some time to spend uh, outside, enjoy the sounds of nature. Um, we had a roe deer stumble across earlier unfortunately the camera didn't see it but he was a beast the first one i've ever seen in this woodland so it was really nice um really nice to see them am i in britain or the usa uh, wood smoke i'm over here in the uk in britain um so unfortunately not in the usa uh, like i said before i'd love to be over there you've got some great public land access um conservation uh shooting kind of laws, uh, not laws, uh, ethos, you know, hunting laws, I guess you could say. Um, and I really like the tag system that you guys have. Uh, I think it's a great approach to conservation and hunting. So uh, yeah, very jealous of you guys, but really also um, do love England. It is a fantastic woodland that I'm in, surrounded by loads of oaks and beech, uh, birch, hazel, holly. Um, and it really is 
a, a very special spot to me here. So thank you again for tuning in. Uh, I hope you enjoy the sounds of the British countryside. It's even funny to see my reaction when I clocked the row. Yeah, I can imagine actually. I'll have to watch that back and see if I can capture it um, as a little short or something. Um, yeah, it really surprised me. I was uh, never seen one here. Never ever seen a roe deer here. And he was uh, gold medal quality. <laughs> so I think guys, it's probably about time to have a little, uh, another little giveaway. So we'll do a giveaway for the two Primal Nomad morale patches. These are Velcro backed. Um, so there'll be one for giveaway for Twitch viewers and one for the giveaway for YouTube viewers. And I'm not going to be right back while I do the setup because I've got most of the setup all done. So. Keywords we have to do. Yes, drum roll please. <laughs> um, that was an awful drum roll <laughs> by me. <laughs> and of course, Ninja 68 won that one. Right, so we are going to get the giveaways going and they are now going. So what you all need to do and I will, again, I will put it in chat myself. And we have all the members here who can enter. I can see all you active usernames. Um, massive shout out to you guys and a huge thank you for watching. You've overwhelmed me with my first live stream today, honestly. Um, I was expecting to kind of be like, hey Tom, hey Tim. <laughs> um, but no, it is amazing to see all you guys here and I can't wait for the future of this because um, it just it just means we can build such a cool community together and I know there's some of you guys out there like Karen, Lundy, um, you guys do little live streams as well at time to time so it'd be great to help promote those as well. Um, all the little channels, big channels, I think if we all kind of are active in the community and um, keep doing stuff like this, it just betters everyone's experience in the bushcraft world. So. Without further ado, the drum roll has been going for some time now, I can imagine. I'm about to type in what you have to put into the, uh, what you have to put in the um, chat to win, and that is patch me up, one word. Patch me up, one word, and that should enter you in. told you we would be with you on this buddy loving it bro thank you so much paul i do honestly appreciate you guys being here um yeah without you guys the channel really is nothing um and it's great to see some new faces in here as well in the chat especially all the way over from america we've had a few americans over on the youtube live chat and it is very very special um nice to connect with people all the way over in that neck of the woods um in fact anthony uh subscriber was watching um, for years and he came over at the weekend and managed to get a good camp out so that was lovely um, lovely to spend time with him so that's it I can see you all on Twitch getting your entries in and of course on YouTube as well um, your setting looks like you could be somewhere in the eastern or midwest USA um, yeah I mean I would love to have a little um, play over in that place, part of the woods. Um, it's good to know that it's a similar kind of setting as well, so I'd probably feel a little bit at home at least. Um, although the flora and fauna would be something that would throw me, but it would be good opportunities to learn more about it. Um, I know you've got a lot more poisonous things over there, <laughs> as well as predators. Um, but yeah, the similarities, I guess, would be the hardwoods, the oaks, the ashes, the, uh, the birch. Um, I'm not sure about holly and stuff like that, if you have that 
over in the USA as frequently, but yeah, it's a really nice setting part of the woods here. And it's, um, it's a shame there's not many too many woodlands with this kind of feeling to it anymore. It's a very wild, natural feeling wood. Um, and it is, yeah, a real nice, quiet spot. Tom in the forest, will we, um, will we be able to grab patches at the state detective stall? Um, 100%, yes, 100%. Sorry, I was just looking, a um, message got deleted that said patch up, but that was uh, just a typo by backwards, back, whoa, eh, back road nomad. Oh my God, tongue twisters. Um, I'm glad you managed to get your entry in there. Um, also Lundy, um, don't worry about Nightbot, it's just uh, being, being an idiot. So I don't, uh, I don't know why it's doing that. I'm going to have a little look at the settings for Nightbot when I get back home. So hopefully on the next stream that won't happen. And then you can spam emotes all the way at your heart's content, because I don't mind. <laughs> um, Paul, uh, you've been on a while now, Liam. I haven't looked at the clock, which is a credit to your live stream, mate. Well, thank you so much. Honestly, that is... Uh, that's kind of music to my ears because I was really anxious last night thinking, what have I signed myself up for? <laughs> I'm going to be sat there looking like a right fool on camera. And I think that's always the nerves you get before you do something you're passionate about, isn't it? So um, that really means a lot. And uh, I'm glad you've been enjoying your time. And hopefully in the future, we'll be able to do this a bit more often as well. Um, I'm aiming to try and get these out, uh, like get on a live stream at least once a week. And if it progresses and, um, you know, uh, subscriber base builds up on Twitch and stuff like that, um, I might actually be able to push that to two or three times uh, a week. And it would be really nice to get it a bit more regular. Like I said, I can do stuff in the cabin. We can even um, sit down and watch some of your guys' footage together and share that with the community and do some live commentary on stuff. Um, it would be really awesome. There's loads of places that this journey can go together. So it's nice to have you here at the beginning. And um, Danny, patch me up, but make sure you've got no spaces in between the words. So patch me up all as one word, buddy. Uh, like the PowerPoint tarp setup. Yeah, thank you, uh, Wood Smoke. It is a really, really lovely, lovely setup. I've got a little post in the back just to give us a little bit of height there. Um, but it's mainly only here just in case the weather comes in, which I do think it's going to drop fairly soon. I can feel the temperature shifting and some grey clouds moving over. But nevertheless, it's, um, it's part of being outside, isn't it, and being adaptable to the weather. Yeah, live streams hard, very hard to keep rolling, um, especially when you're, you know, when you've got a game or a screen in front of you, it's quite easy to keep engagement going. Um, but out here, it's nice that you guys have been really interactive as well. So thank you so much. Um, honestly, smash this, mate. Been really immersed with brew in hand. Well, thank you so much again. Really, I do appreciate that. As long as you have fun when you stream, that's all that matters. A hundred percent. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it's about. It's not about the view counts or it's about whatever. It's just about getting out and enjoying it. And um, yeah, sometimes when I get out and I film a video. It can be quite stressful because I'm trying to get the perfect shot. And then, yeah, uh, this is nice. Even though it, it leaves it raw, you guys get to see all the mistakes. Um, but I think that's part of the reality of it, isn't it? And what makes it a bit more special as well. Lump. Even managed to stream live while on the move as a feat on its own. Done a great job, mate. Thank you, Jack. Uh, yeah, honestly. It's like um, when I walk around and sometimes the signal gets lost. I think my HDMI cable might be a bit dodgy, so I might buy a new one and see if I can swap that out um, or see if I get the interference issues. But it's all trials and tribulations, and I'll find what works and what doesn't and be able to cater and fine-tune it from there. Um, just said to Cam, where's the time gone? Being riveted, mate. Well, I'm really, uh, really glad. And it has actually flown by, flown by. I thought I'd be done by kind of two o'clock or something. So, um, and going on about time flying, uh, the giveaway's been flying away in the background there. So if you have just tuned in, last chance to type patch me up, 
patch me up, no spaces, uh, put it in chat and you get entered into winning a Primal Nomad morale patch. Uh, that's both on Twitch and YouTube. And if you're on Twitch and you've just tuned in, um, you can type exclamation mark giveaway and join a giveaway there where you get some points for following and for watching the stream. And that's for a bearskin hoodie. But we're going to go now to uh, YouTube. We're going to do a giveaway. And let's see, uh, Ollie just opened the stream up on YouTube too. Hadn't realized it would be such a great way to find new outdoors channels. Oh, thank you so much, Ollie. Uh, appreciate you popping in. Really, really, um, yeah, really, like you say, it's a great way to meet other people, talk to people in amongst the community while we're all doing something together. You guys get to ask me questions. Um, I get to ask you some questions. And we just have a nice time together. And for those of you who can't get out today, uh, it's nice, um, hopefully, that I'm able to share this with you. And it's really, really valued of you guys watching as well. So I can't say thank you enough. Um, so we're going to, and quickly before I do do the giveaway, is that an oil skin top? The colour looks though it is. It's not, but I completely understand where you're getting that from because it's, it's that really lovely, it really does look like an oil skin when the light's through it, um, which I love in the morning. It's a DD ultralight top, so it's actually the opposite end of the spectrum to an oil skin, but in reality I prefer the oil skin tops. Um, Joe Poshrat, a really good friend and again, great bushcrafter. He has a cold cracker bushcraft one and it's fantastic. I've got some ones by Thornhill Ultra Heavy. Um, he's a UK maker that does wax canvas or oil skin tarps and they're just fantastic. So hard wearing and reliable. Um, so yeah, this one is a super light one though, just because everything I've brought in today is quite weighty in general. So um, I'm just about to draw the giveaway results for the Primal Nomad patch. Um, again, you can type patch me up in chat to be entered to win that giveaway. That's the only prerequisite. So I'll give you another 30 seconds if you are watching on YouTube to type that in. Also on Twitch, type it in because I'll be doing the draw straight away afterwards. And to all of you who are viewing, um, really, really, yeah, thank you and good luck. Right, let's have a little look. So we are on. So we are on YouTube. We're going to roll it now. Everyone who typed patch me up. Let's go. And there we are. William. Well done, buddy. Well done, William. You just won the giveaway. Uh, massive congratulations, dude. Uh, send me a message over Instagram or drop me a line on, um, on YouTube. You can see my email address in my about section. And uh, yeah, we can go from there about getting that patch all the way over to you. Congratulations, buddy. And thank you for tuning in. I know you've been here since the beginning as well, or very early on in the stream. So thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm just about to draw the giveaway now on Twitch for the Twitch viewers and we can go from there. Let's have a little watch and see who wins this one. So for the Twitch viewers, here we go. And there we are. It's a father and the son win today for the Twitch stream. Um, we have Paul Little winning on the other Primal Nomad patch. <laughs> so we've got one going to William and we've got one going to Paul Little. So I can in fact send Paul, I can send Cam Soap with you, uh, with this to you guys. William, I'll get this one over to you. And then obviously Lynch68, I'll get the other soap over to you. So guys, well done, that is amazing. Um, it all worked out. Um, I'm so glad that you've each been able to win something and to the guys who didn't win anything on the next three streams after this one there'll be 
the same giveaways running, so I'm going to be giving away again patches and soaps. So if you do want to join in on the next few streams, I'll be doing that throughout them. And also if you do watch on Twitch and you follow, you can get the entry to the bearskin uh, fleece hoodie as well. So if you <coughs> excuse me, if you follow you instantly receive 350 points to enter the giveaway it costs 250 so you already get one and a half tickets cost there and you get your first entry for free so you only need to watch for a small amount of time to get your maximum of five tickets and that just gives you the best chance of uh, winning but you could just enter with one you don't even have to enter um, but yeah it's only available on twitch for the bearskin fleece just due to the sponsorships but I'm really uh, just glad that that worked because I was kind of panicking. I was thinking, well, I've got to be able to do a giveaway that's available for everyone. Um, so this way with this little bot, Nightbot, uh, it allows me to do it for both platforms. And uh, there are better odds maybe on certain platforms at certain times, depending on the viewership, but that's all part of the fun. And hopefully, like I said, most of you guys will have a chance at winning something over the duration of these streams anyway um, as a little thank you from me cam nick jaws <laughs> so not only did cameron win the soap he also managed to nick your patch so you're getting a replacement patch sent to you uh, that you just won that's fantastic well done buddy Apache Pilot 75 says, all you YouTube lot, make sure you're following on Twitch also. Let's get that target smashed. Oh, well, thank you so much, buddy. Yeah, you can see at the top of the screen, I've got a target there for Twitch affiliate. And all that means is, when I reach affiliate is it just means that I can give you guys some little more rewards. <laughs> so you can earn channel points to uh, redeem little emojis to use in the chat, like little campfires and, uh, Primal Nomad packing out with his backpack and stuff like that and little um, gifts from the Bushcraft King rap and stuff so it's a little uh, fun thing to do if you can join and follow on Twitch help me reach that 50 gold and Twitch will make me affiliate and it just means I can do some cool stuff with you guys as well um, add some music and stuff into the stream YouTube by all means watch on YouTube it's always going to be free to watch on here as well um, any of that super chat stuff uh, although it's appreciated whenever they come and I'm sure all streamers agree um, it's never necessary and the content's always going to be free for you guys so yeah I'm just glad the little giveaways are a way of giving back for you guys as well um, let's have a look at YouTube chat well done William well done William yeah that's major day I'm so glad buddy honestly Nightbot is annoying. Yeah, sorry, Woodsmoke. I'll have a little look at Nightbot and um, get it to stop timing people out. So I apologize about that. Um, Nightbot is, yeah, and essentially, <laughs> Karen got it, an automatic bouncer. It just uh, stops people coming in and spamming like product links, for example, or uh, being racist in chat or bigotry or anything like that. Um, it just, you don't want to always leave your chat open to kind of people being uh, nasty <laughs> or spreading. I don't want them to drop a link that's malicious. You guys click on it and lose your YouTube account, for example. So all stuff like that. Um, it's definitely a power trip, a glance into the future of AI. <laughs> it is on a power trip. It's like I told it to stop spamming. It's like, oh, if you're using the thumbs up twice, it's telling you you're spamming. So I do apologize for it. You're not signed up to Twitch, can't keep up with the socials you got already. No, that's absolutely fine. I mean, um, Twitch is, um, Twitch is one of these great kind of viewing platforms. Um, but yeah, it does get a bit much to manage with all these things. But the good thing about Twitch is there's no kind of text. It is literally just video. Uh, it is just a live streaming platform. So, um, yeah, you don't get spammed, thankfully, with all the kind of stories and posts. You just tune into what's on live uh, or what you're following, which is handy. Um, but yeah, I mean, my batteries are probably on their way out. So I'm going to do a little bit of a pack down now and bring you along on that journey of packing down the cup. 
I am going to keep the crunchy out because I love a crunchy. And I'm going to start packing the stove away as well. trying to change scenes quickly but if it doesn't change that's not a drama I um, just wanted it to change off of the one that switches to low network so the Otzi grill is good and cold now the ashes have all died And there is one bit here which has still got some ember in, which I want to make sure is completely out, just like so. Yep, all good and cold. And with this Otzi grill, because it gets a little bit greasy, I tend to keep a plastic bag. At home, or if I was on a multi trip, I could then whack it out and just get it using again, get it burning. So you can see it packs down really nicely into this little bag here. It is fantastic. And these handles make it easy to carry. Put my knife back in this little kit bag that I have. So I'm just going to start packing these little bits away, like I said, and I'll show you some of the little tips and tricks I use when I'm packing kit down. Just double check how chat's going. Congratulations on your first stream buddy smashed it uh, really do appreciate that paul thank you so much um absolutely mate honestly this has a special feeling behind it you'll be surprised just like the youtube video and who where you'll reach now by live streaming
which is lovely, but again, not one for long trails. I've got the Isle Royale, so more of a canoe backpack, but I still love it for quick overnighters. Uh, it's heavy oil canvas, <laughs> but it's sturdy and it's good, good hard wearing bit of kit. Uh, Helicon Tech Satchel is a really great favourite um, just for slinging over the shoulder and for my streaming backpack I've just got a little um, Molly kind of day sack, 20 litre day sack um, with everything in there so it's got loads of attachment points on the outsides and it seems to do really well so I'm really happy about that. You should make some of your trusted people moderators on YouTube. Good mods make streams so much better. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, that's a really good idea. I definitely will do. Um, I'll reach out to a few people independently uh, and see if they are happy to be... Um, yeah, see if they're happy to be mods for me. Uh, Lundy, great to see you, buddy. I think you just messaged that you were heading off. I don't know if the bot retracted that or if uh, that was on your side but thank you so much for tuning in mate i really do appreciate it guys go check out lundy he's got a great channel uh, drop him a subscribe um, and i'm sure he'll appreciate it so yeah thanks for tuning in mate oh drop the mic sorry guys not time for that yet. <laughs> so I'm going to start disconnecting this top just by removing the pegs obviously. But I'll show you how I normally pack my tops away and get it into such a small little package. This is where the toggles really come in handy. Just as a quick release method for a top. So I normally just take my time with this bit because this is the bit that always goes pear shaped. Because these things are so light and if you've got a bit of a breeze, you end up with a big old sock of air that you can't do anything with. And I have been there before many a time. <laughs> So I normally fold this about four times until I've got a fairly long, narrow strip of tarp. And then from there, you can generally speak in, third that in. Then you've got something like that now. I'll try and push most of the air out of that as we go. Then you can fold that in half again, lengthways. So again, and I'll show you a cool little trick to getting it nice and tight. Pull that quick release nut that we showed you at the beginning. I like to get my toggles down to one end. Try and squeeze the air out as best as you can.
usually roll that out, roll that air out, and try and get it as tight as I can with this method without pushing the top out like I just did. I apologize about that. And then simply you can grab your long tail that you've now got. Obviously that's attached to that side still. And you can simply start by wrapping that around and pulling tight as you start to go with your top. Get that tail crossed over now. Let's start winding the other way. You can really start to get a small package out of something that can take up a lot of room. And then obviously you can keep wrapping that as you would any other normal tarp. But that wrenching down off of that tree really gets it to a good handy size. That doesn't take up too much room in your backpack then. And there we are. Tiny little tarp. Which can then live nicely in the end of my backpack or my side satchel, along with my oil here. And I think we are just getting a shower now. So that is the perfect time to have taken down the tarp, isn't it? <laughs> but I think we'll take a nice walk out together in that sense then. I think we we go with what nature's hinting at and let's take a little short walk through the woods and see what we can find on the way out. Um, I really again cannot thank you enough or more for tuning in. I'm going to come over to the camera now. So there we have the Helicon Tex satchel, really good bit of kit. And obviously we'll kick over some of this to try and blend in me and my impact. I think that's fairly good. So if you give me two seconds, my fellow nomads, I'm gonna have a little <clears throat> adjustment of this camera. You might see leaf litter for a second. So guys, um, this will probably be the last little bit that you see of me, because the camera is now going to be on my shoulders. Um, but let's just check everything's live. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I'm going to hike back and then eventually...
yeah. How it's going over on the YouTube side. And uh, yes, sorry, the, uh, the floor rug that I was using, I just saw two comments, Wood Smoke and Lundy. That's by Thornhill Ultra Heavy. Um, he makes some really amazing gear. Thornhill Ultra Heavy. Um, I will put his name just in the YouTube chat for you guys to see quickly before I walk off. Ultra heavy. Heavy. And yeah, I'm going to have a nice little walk out. You guys will be able to join me on that walk out from the shoulder. You'll be able to see all the views I get to see. And if any of you guys are leaving now, thank you so much for tuning in. It does mean the world. Um, this couldn't have been this wouldn't have been possible without any of you guys turning up. You're the real MVPs here. Um, and yeah, I can't reiterate my thanks for you guys. That's why I want to do these giveaways um, and why I want to return something back to the community. Um, to you guys in, the, in America, over in the States, I deeply appreciate you guys watching, uh, especially with the time differences. And um, yeah, I appreciate you chatting and getting stuck in with the community. There's some great other people here on the, uh, on the chats and stuff. And hopefully we'll be able to find that road here. Although, I think with how clumsy I'm being walking at the moment, that might be a little bit well wishing. <laughs> I hope this view is okay for you as I walk. Eyes to the tree line for that row, no rain's coming. Oh yes, 100%. Definitely keeping my eyes out for him. He's so well camouflaged in here. I'm just going to get a picture, guys, of the first live stream. <laughs> You can all wave at my phone. <laughs> cool. It's got to be done. Memorize it in the uh, memorize it in the books. And definitely the first of many. Um, yeah, it's been great to see everyone tune in. William, make sure you send me a message as well. Um, and Paul, you're more than welcome. Like, thank you so much for tuning in, mate. Um, five minutes till 11 a.m. Nice, and almost 9 a.m. in your locale. Oh, that's great. Well, I hope you guys over there in the stateside have an amazing rest of the day. Um, and start to it. I know it's about 4 p.m. in the afternoon here, so I'm going to go crack on, um, have a little watch back through some of the bits of this and see how it all came together. Probably try and make a few shorts from it as well. Whew. There's a little squirrel over there. And then, yes, get ready for work. The inevitable grind and slog, which I'm quite glad for, to be honest. I have uh, had quite a lot of time off over winter due to the weather, so it'll be good to be earning again.
Oh, William, I'm glad to know. Thank you so much. Brilliant wood smoke. Yeah, the bushcraft annuals, it's got to be done. Oh, look at that view, guys. It doesn't look that much. There's a little bit of a, little bit of a hill there and this pack. It's got some dead weight with that lithium battery in it, I tell you. <laughs> so, um, guys, thank you so, so much for tuning in. I'm gonna probably leave you with me panting out of breath as I got this last little stretch of a hill. <laughs> and I'm gonna try and change scenes over to um, the ending. I can't reiterate my thanks to you. Make sure if you're on Twitch side, you've gone over to the exclamation mark giveaway command and joined in that. Um, you can accumulate your tickets, your points until you've got enough to buy all five tickets and do that if you so wish. But best of luck everyone to, uh, to the entry. Um, I'm glad the soaps and the patches were won, especially by some valuable people. Thank you, Apache Pilot. I do appreciate that, buddy. Yeah, definitely do. Um, and yeah, I can't begin to thank you all enough. So until next time, stay safe and I'll see you soon. It might take a while to end the stream because my little buttons aren't working too well, but... <laughs> <laughs>